<laughs> not your problem. But they, they, <laughs> at least you, you know? get to reset. Uh, it costs more time, right? <laughs> no way. At, at least, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they heard you though. Oh. <laughs> but um, welcome in everyone. I am Hikaru. I am your host for today. Uh, this is my first hosting of the IDNV tournament, and today we'll have Team SZ versus Team Dream Bubbles coming up next. Uh, it's supposed to start about two minutes ago. However, uh, we do seem to be running into a couple of interruptions. Um, about There's about going to be about a five-minute delay until this match gets started. Uh, I will get that started as soon as possible, but um, you guys probably heard Paul's intro. Uh, and <laughs> Sorry about that. That was just so funny. I know. This is okay. <laughs> Give me one second, you guys. Which VC does Team Dream Bubbles go into? Uh, please go into... I think you guys... Dream Bubbles is in Team 1. And then Team SC should be in 2. This is actually flipped around, so... Wait, no, no. SC should be Team 1. Dream Bubbles is Team 2. Yeah, because you guys are Team E. Uh, let's see. So all we're missing is the Hunter for SC. <laughs> How's everyone doing today in chat? Once again, I will. Uh, the alerts are turned off, and uh, I will not be interacting too much with chat, but I will be reading it on occasion. So thank you guys for showing up today and supporting your favorite teams. Um, supporting IDV in general. Uh, if you guys have not seen the tournament scheduling yet, there this is the beginner's bracket for uh, November 4th and 5th. There will be a Veterans Tournament on November 11th and 12th. Uh, okay. We just need one more person. There we go. All the survivors are in. We're just waiting in. Ripper just got buffed recently, correct? Who? Ripper. Did he? Yeah, he basically got buffed with like all his movement speed around chair as well. Like Oh that. That was a while back yeah. ago. Last I checked. Oh, I'm a little bit behind, but I mean he still <laughs> played. Like we see Ripper in like China IV IVL, so Yeah. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if like, you know, Ripper comes out or like Wu Chang still, because he has just like so much uh like mobility in that too as well. But you are right, like, choosing the more, like, chase hunters. Yeah, I was kind of hoping to see, like, you know, uh, the the more um, unique hunters, like Dream Witch or Clerk or, like, you know, those kinds of hunters that, like, kind of need to finesse themselves a little bit to, to make mm -hmm. themselves work. Those are the really interesting to watch ones. That, that's not to say, like, the games haven't been interesting, but they have been, like, pretty straightforward, which is... um. They're, they're definitely fun to watch when they're close. <laughs> oh, yes. Yes, especially yesterday. I saw some pretty good close matches, too, as well. Mm -hmm. It was really exciting to see. I'm not going to lie. It's just so great to see how, like, um, with the beginner teams, like, they just have, like, different um, how coordination and, and tactics to do as well. Yeah. Like, uh, the the tournament is limited to Griffins or and Manticores. Like, that's the, the average team level. But the the range of having a griffin is so so like crazy high and lower end because like i've been kited by griffins before and it's kind of crazy <laughs> but then i've also had griffins who like don't know how to pop a cypher <laughs> <laughs> all right looks like we almost have everyone we're just missing the hunter right now uh the team captain for them is in the chat right now. I'm that Griffin. No, no, no. Don't worry about it, you guys. <laughs> Everyone learns at their own pacing. All right. The hunter is here. So we just need one map pick and one survivor ban. The rules seem to favor the hunter a little bit in this instance, but there were some, uh, there were some issues yesterday where um, some of the survivors didn't know about... Uh, the legendary picks like or not the the legendary matchmaking and um the area selection so uh if people aren't like avid ranked players i guess 
it, once you get to like right under Griffin, they start to do area selection. So the hunters will be able to see where you start. And if you're playing a decoder or something like that, you might want to be a little careful about where you hide because the hunters are probably going to know where you are. Um, just uh, a little heads up to all the, the newer players out there who may not know what is going on currently. But um, they do do this during, uh, you know, Griffin and up ranks, and they also do it in many of the tournaments. I thought it'd be nice if they experienced like a little bit of what that's like. But uh, if you're surprised about like, oh, the hunter kind of showed up instantly, it's because they already know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I'm pretty sure they're going to start adding it to um, the other tiers as well. Oh, just really? So, like, yeah, just so they can get the feeling. And um, just mm -hmm. and I want to say it like adapts in rank. It helps the hunter so much too as well. They just want to kind of make it a little bit more balanced. Um, so I mean, when that comes in, so the other tiers will be able to like choose their spawns. And honestly, I think it'll just be good for them too as well. Mm -hmm. And you know that makes sense because like it, they want to make it a more competitive game. You need that to take out the RNG. Mm -hmm. Oh, they said they need a second. I'm so glad I scheduled so much extra time in between matches. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let me turn this on really quick before I forget. I'm going to pause my music really quick. And then... I love your song choice selection. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, the, for the beginning, it, it was um, it was for the League of Legends. The what they yeah, the uh, new um, Hard Steel. I, I was say Back Street. <laughs> Back Street. Yeah, that's really cool. I'm gonna get the affiliate switch. The skin. Oh my god, it's so yeah. nice. Yeah, I love the. I love all their music that's been coming out for lately. Mm -hmm. All right, we got the really good. Pick. Switch it over really quick. It's going to be Moonlit, and the first Survivor Band is Seer. Okie doke. And I'm going to keep it on this screen until uh, they start the area selection points, because at that point, you can't see what the Hunter is. Normally, there is a draft pick, but in the beginner's bracket, it should be okay if we just do it regularly. Um, swing on one more, and we're ready to go. All right, this is Team SZ versus Team Dream Bubbles. Uh, and Team SZ will be... Oh! There we go. Sorry, it was not switching over. Um, yes, Team SZ will be hunting first. Even with the recent Seer Man, Seer Man... I'm sorry, Seer Nerf? Seer is just such a good character in general, so... Batting Seer first is just honestly, I, I, I kind of get it because the Seer out can just cost so much time as well. Yeah, I agree. The It seems like you, you have to have really good team coordination with uh, with Seer because like even at the Alicorn level, sometimes they just never use the Owl until it gets onto themselves. So. I know, right? <laughs> but when they it comes down, <laughs> yeah, it comes it comes down hard and it buys you a lot of time with that kite. I know a lot of, uh, a lot of hunters are very scared of that Seer Owl. But, you know, Seer has some of the best skins in the game. I, I love the white seer skin. It looks so pretty. Oh yeah, the side skin is really nice. <laughs> All right, the game is going underway. It looks like it is going to be a bloody queen for the hunter and uh, a mercenary psychologist, perfumer, and cheerleader. What do you make of their team comp? I kind of think they that these survivors actually did their homework because you see all these uh, character selections are all countering uh, bloody queen. And we see that Rue is choosing Bloody Queen in between the Ada and the Cheerleader. This comp is really good in the aspect just because they're able to eat so much hit. And since the new survivor, uh, Cheerleader came out, her distance just to dodge a mirror is just so great and powerful against Bloody Queen. Yeah, I've noticed that too. Like, there were a lot of questions about whether Cheerleader and Arrow Place would be allowed. And, you know, they're not that new, but Cheerleader does... She's like kind of hidden strong because of how often she's played. So... <laughs> I, I think yeah. that like a lot of people don't know exactly how fast she is just yet, but she is very fast. 
Yeah, we start to see the Blood Queen gonna obviously chase the Edo over here on four stop. Four stop is a really good uh, choice. Uh, you guys get to use the mirror over here just to you know cut off that distance and be able to get a free hit on Edo. But she is, you know, she does have that uh, self healing, so it's basically like she didn't get a hit, causing her team to you know be able to kite more and be able to keep the hunter on this side of the map. Yeah, this side of the map is pretty strong. It, it seems like based on the character selections or the, the area selections, the rest of the survivors are all on the other side of the map. And uh, over this section, it, it's pretty strong for certain characters like uh, Acrobat or Patient. But I think for a psychologist, I mean, it's fine because you can take the extra hit, but it, it's not like she's particularly strong here. And good job from the Bloody Queen, getting just a regular hit, so she has her mirror up just to down this psychologist uh, pretty fast. But we see that the survivors are, you know, above 50, a decent kite over here. And um, for the survivors, so Mercenary is going to come in, hopefully for the rescue. But it wasn't a bad kite, you know, it's 8 or 3 hits. Going to try to waste as much time for this Bloody Queen, you know, she is going to use 2 mirrors. But, you know, good job from both sides. Uh, decent kite, but, you know, an obviously quick fast down for a Bloody Queen against Adida. Yeah, it doesn't look like any of the survivors are on their way just yet, but one of them does get spotted out. It's the, the perfumer. I almost mistaken that for a toy merchant, but uh, she might be able to get this rescue off pretty soon. Oh, she uses a perfume, but the hit does not connect. Let's see if she actually... Oh, she, she went back and took the perfume, and that probably will mean that Psychologist is going to second chair right about now, making it very difficult for the survivors to put themselves into a winning position. There's a second perfume... And it does miss as well, but uh, at, at this point, Psychologist is not looking like in, she's going to be in a good position. Yeah, going to get off the perfumer did bring Tide, so not that kiting build. Ada is, is going to take that last effort. Um, Blood Queen is doing a really good job being able to bait off those two perfumes, the perfumer, and potentially getting the last effort on the perfumer. So we're going to have a double down, and Rue is going to have a is really in good positioning. Three ciphers left, two people down. So this is a really good starting match for uh, Rue's Bloody Queen over here. Mm -hmm. And this is one of those things that like uh, survivors learn to do that uh, when they split up after. After they start doing their their rescue you kind of have one character going to the one corner of the map and the other character going to the other corner that way the hunter has to split their focus but as with the bloody queen when you can mirror across the map like that it is not as effective because she can just move on over to the other side yeah, and you know, Blood Queen is also known for that Thai Queen, but we're gonna use the mirror just to spot out, uh, trying to find out this perfumer, try to get a hit on the mercenary, unfortunately hitting that uh, area around her, and is gonna cheer perfumer. We do see uh, cheerleader is on one of the uh, the second to last cipher, and mercenary gonna go in for a really early save. So Rude putting a lot of pressure on these survivors over here. Uh, perfumer gonna do the best to kite out with what she has. Last cipher does come out, so perfumer is gonna be her second time on chair. Yeah, there there are only two ciphers left though, and one of them looks like it's almost done at 78%. Uh, Mercenaries headed towards the last cipher on the bridge. I think that one had some progress on it. Well, actually, that one was already been completed. Uh, Blood Queen is switching targets onto the cheerleader. Um, cheerleader, like you mentioned, is really good at quieting Blood Queen, but no, she she opts to pick up the uh, the perfumer and finish her off. Pretty good decision. I think this is her second chair, and. Uh, both survivors are around here, which means no one's decoding, and that 78% cipher was never finished. Yeah, we do see that Rue did see these other two survivors. Uh, cheerleader is going to get hit. Don't know if she brought Tide over here, but blinks and downs the cheerleader, so it's going to be a, a stuff rescue over here. And Rue is doing really good with this Blood Queen, putting so much pressure, so much um, being able to spot out where she is. So she's able to, you know, just chair this cheerleader since she does know where Mercenary is on this map. Mercenary is trying to, like, probably dodge, probably cause enough time for maybe cheerleader to struggle street, but Mercenary does have that elbow part. We do see her Perfumer out of the game. And Mercenary does get the hit, unfortunately, and Bloody Queen Brew is just showing a good dominance on this map over here. Yeah, this is one of Bloody Queen's stronger maps because of uh, how much distance she can cover with her mirror. And uh, just for a reference for how points are working right now, I know someone asked this question earlier, but it could still be anyone's game. Team B is currently ahead, Team AFK, with 42 points. However, they have no more games today, and each team has eight more games to play today. Uh, which means they have plenty of opportunities to rack up a ton of points for their team. And like you saw there, a 4k is worth 5 points for your team. So, it could still be anyone's game yet. That yeah, we're doing a really good job. That was 
honestly, great mirrors. I think she hit, I think Rue hit every Bloody Queen mirror uh, on this map, especially. I'm being able to get that four elimination. So five points going to Rue's team is really good in, in that aspect. Yes, sir. Let me uh, just update the scoreboard really quick. I'm kind of doing it manually by hand. I, I think there's a better way to do this, but... <laughs> You're okay. <laughs> Well, I'm just going to get set up for the second game really quick. Let me switch the scene back up to our caster section. All right. Um, so now we will switch it up for Team SZ to survive against uh, the Hunter for Team Dream Bubbles, which is, I think it's Ireland, though. I don't know whether they say that or not, but I'm just going to do it. <laughs> Ireland, though. Because <laughs> there's like O at the beginning, too. Oh, Orlando? <laughs> yeah, maybe it's just Ireland. I've been saying it wrong this whole time. <laughs> All right, let me get the survivor ban and the map selection. kind of feel them i don't like bloody queen <laughs> true especially like on her really decent map which is moonlight it's just so much areas so much open areas to where she can just honestly just smear and get a free hit but you, i mean you know i it used is to her best map. yeah i used to feel the same but then like opera singer came out and i was like wait i hate you so much more <laughs> <laughs> yeah opera singer too is just uh, uh yeah honestly yeah you're right she has just so many places just to dash in the open especially when it gets full presence opera senior is showing like she's really dominating um in tournaments as well so yeah we uh, haven't just because her buffs or her nerves my bad we haven't seen a single opera singer played yet she is kind of difficult to play in certain areas like uh this it might not be true for mobile but for pc sometimes when the little dark spots overlap it's very difficult to determine which way you um, like what what area you have to press to teleport to what area and it could put your ability back on cooldown but that's more of like a oh this got confusing rather than a oh she's kind of not overpowered or something like that but she is quite strong for a hunter <laughs> yeah she is a little bit too strong but i mean it just shifted away so i mean it's glad that she came out because now we see all these veterans op uh survivors coming in like lawyer explorer gardener mm. like um so that's just really good it shifts the meta but i mean sangria is very hard to play and once you knew, know how to use her she's just incredibly too fast right it's the netties does like do a pretty good job of like retroactively saying like oh this is a little bit too strong because i remember this happening pretty quickly for sangria where her attack recovery was half of what it was <laughs> currently oh, yeah but before that she's <laughs> I will say, like, it took him a while to nerf Flywheel, and everybody had Flywheel, so side die. <laughs> All right. With, with Knee Jerk, too, as well. <laughs> yeah, and Knee Jerk as well. They're like, wait a minute. <laughs> All right, we're heading into game two. Um, looks like it's going to be Leo's Memory with uh, a Seer Band, and that's it. The, the, the round after this will have one hunter band and two survivor bands with the survivors picking the map in that uh, in that scenario. So uh, the game is going to get started. Oh, I forgot to do map selection. No way. All right. Sorry, we have to restart really quick. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, you guys. I messed up. How do I um? How do I restart? I think you just have to ping them. I had it like in know. chat. All right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it looks like they're playing right now. Do you want to just continue on? <laughs> we can. I, I don't think there's an issue too much with the their no. selection. So we'll just uh, start shoutcasting from here. <laughs> but I mean, it was a good, uh, it was a really good spawn layout for the Mind's Eye and Lawyer. So they are optimizing that Cypherish against this Ant. Uh, Enchantress is going to get the, she got a really good uh, area um, to kite in Factory. And we do see that she does have broken windows. So going to be a decent long enough kite, especially with all those stuns that she's able to accum accumulate up. Um, so we're going to see how Anne can basically try to down this Enchantress as fast as she can. And you know, I thought Anne was like one of those anti-bully hunters that, you know, she has a stun to kind of counteract the other stuns, but 
it's not always the case with Anne. She she sometimes can still get bullied by by certain survivors. Like how she did right there with her silence. Oh, oh no, there's a failed blink on her part. But I think she's still able to maybe get a hit on this Enchantress before she starts getting stacks on her. Uh, she's cutting pretty well for an Enchantress and out in the open. Yeah, she, uh, and canceling that, uh, Enchantress abilities over here. Gonna, oh, got the charge attack off that pallet, so that's a really good, uh, player over here by this Anne. Gonna try to chase her, gonna try to use the cast, just probably maybe to cancel out her stunning ability. Um, but Enchantress does have a flare gun stun, so it's gonna be whoever can just, you know, stun first between this Anne and Enchantress. Gonna be kiting over here, uh, towards the lawyer, probably maybe gonna, uh, double, double kite over here. Um, just to see, um, how, you know, taking get a palace done or just the flare gun can come out but we do see that uh the lawyer is gonna get to the palace on just to make the enchantress kite a little bit longer just to get a better kiting area so good job from um sc survivors over here yeah the biggest fear for hunters if uh you hear that that cypher machine going off and you're walking through a pallet you, you better believe there's someone hiding behind that and waiting to help their partner <laughs> You never know. You just never know. So you gotta like bait every single pallet. <laughs> uh -huh. And she just, I mean, but good guy from SC Survivors. They're down to two ciphers left just because of this mind's eye and lawyer since she wasn't able to find those two. And Enchantress is doing a really good kite, having four stacks. Perfumer trying to body block the store using the perfume, but just to try to get this Enchantress to kite. And we're gonna see if Enchantress can get the. She got the triple stun. So let's see if she's able to get to a window. Does she have flywheel? She gets, that is just two stuns in under, under a five seconds to be able to kite as long as she can against this Anne. No, yeah, she's been, oh, she's got those stacks on stacks. And she did a really good job of dodging those cats. Mm-hmm. It, it seems like it, until Anne gets their first presence, it's very difficult for her to uh, reposition her cats onto a good area. Oh, the ciphers are already popped. All five, five ciphers are done. Yes. Yeah, that and, was a five cipher kite from this Enchantress. Yeah, with a with a mind's eye and a lawyer going on it, um, they're going to be cipher rushing really, really hard. Um, I don't think anyone brought tide. Was she the tide? I don't think. Would well, you think they'll be able to try to four man escape or just take the three, the three escape over here? Uh, it looks like they're opting to do the three person escape, but I don't see the position. But there's a teleport onto what looks like mind's eye. I think. No, that's a perfumer. Oh, the perfumer. And to try to, I think they're gonna go for a rescue. So this could possibly be, maybe Orlando does have to get at least one. Perfumer doing a really good job trying to stall over here on Moongate. Gonna use this cat try to stun the perfumer. She's able to get that pallet down just to kite a little bit longer. We do see a rescue over here from the Enchantress. So who's swinging to the pallet? Gets the pallet stun. This perfumer is doing so well, just causing so much time just to see if she can. Uh, probably get to the other exit gate over there for her teammates to mason, uh, basically try to get out. Yeah, and it looks like Perfumer is going to be the last chase. I'm certain by now that the rest of the survivors are already at the other door. Uh, she missed the attack, but it does get the down on the Perfumer. It looks like the survivors are healing up, but I don't know if they're going to be coming in for the rescue. Actually, there's someone by the door closest to them. Yes. They actually are healing. Detention is going to be out pretty soon, and survivors possibly already know that. This is probably, they're going to go for a, a four-man escape. Enchantress does have the flare gun, so it is possible. Detention does have 14 seconds left, and and uh, Orlando just has to camp this chair as best he could just to prevent that four-man escape. But f all survivors coming from different angles, run from the door, run from the middle, and run from the wall. So Orlando does have to make sure his camp on this chair is going to be really good over here. And you do have to be careful with... You do have to be careful with who you hit here, because if they get too close to that door, she's going to... Yes, three stack you, oh, and then... Three stack over here. <laughs> mm-hmm. And all four survivors just get out, giving a four, a five-point lead for Sky survivors. Yeah... The, it's very difficult at, at the very end of the game because like I, I, a lot of hunters have trouble catching up if you don't have that first down within the first 60 seconds of the game. It kind of determines the flow of the rest of the game. And uh, 
you know, that Enchantress did a really good first kite. It was very, very difficult for Anne to catch up to her. And um, sometimes you got to use the, the stun a little bit more proactively when you're Anne and not just like silence them. Because, you know, the stun is a little bit stronger than the silence, in my opinion. The silence is really used for, in my opinion, cutting off a cypher. You don't really use the silence for anything else because the, the stun is just so much better. <laughs> yeah, honestly, or possibly like um, any like. Uh, just to cut off a cipher too as well, but um, it was unfortunately that the ant did miss the blink, so that was a little bit making the kite a little bit longer for this enchantress. Uh, she was full health with so many stacks, and her movement against this ant, against the cats, getting the stuns, being able to stun in factory two times in the, under a span of five seconds was just a tremendous game changer just for her to kite at least five ciphers. Mm -hmm. And I do see some concerns in the chat about whether or not this match should have been restarted. As you can see, we are 10 minutes late because some of the teams were late. Uh, we do not have enough time to restart. So to keep the tournament on schedule, we're just going to have to power on through. Um, it seems like both teams kind of just started playing it out and the hunter immediately started hunting. So I don't see any reason that we, we need to get restarted. Um, for, for future reference, I will be a little bit more careful. This, this was my fault. I am sorry. So... <laughs> Um, just to keep the tournament on in a scheduled orderly manner, we are going to keep going. So let's head into round two. I will start getting the teams in. Uh, you know, if we had a little bit more time, I would be a lot more, uh, able to like restart it, but unfortunately we are running short. But I mean, it looked like as the both teams didn't really uh, mind in that aspect. They continued to play and they did their rotations. So, mm -hmm. I mean, they we continued it throughout. So next up will be Team Dream Bubbles. They're going to be surviving. And then SZ will be hunting. So let me just get everybody in. And then if I could get the Hunter ban... In the map pick from the survivors, that would be great. And let me enable area selection just so I don't forget this time. <laughs> that cypher rush from that team was incredibly fast. Yeah. But Lawyer's it, lawyer is just an upcoming survivor that is really slept on. Honestly, I think so too. His recent buffs were kind of insane. Like yeah. that's a big buff. Like when you can also have the 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 speed running and then the the pallet decode or the the decoding speed increase is kind of percentile rather than just like once you hit one twenty five or one hundred percent, then you you get that bonus. So mm -hmm. he's so much especially, better. Uh, it's, he's just so map dependent too, especially like Leo's memory, like. If he was just so many areas just to hide, being able to know where the hunter is at all time. And I I mean, I understand why they choose uh they chose lawyer on Leo's memory. Just if he got factory, it would have been just like a needle in a haystack trying to find that lawyer in that factory. <laughs> That's true. He got he does have full vision of you all the time with that little map of his. And uh I, I think even with a mind's eye, she kinda has full vision of you too when she taps you down with her cane. <laughs> it is a very difficult to to um to catch those two characters if they know how to hide really well and plus it's leo's memory leo's memory is a very dark map and you can change the settings now to make the map a little brighter but there are a lot of really obnoxious hiding spots <laughs> on yeah. that map as i have learned but it was a really well coordinated team since they had mind's eye and lawyer lawyer can just easily tell where the mind's eye was so the mind's eye wouldn't be able to get notified by the hunter if she tapped her cane so mm -hmm. great communication overall and it was a phenomenal kite let me see if i can get the hunter in here and then one Um, hold on.
Yes, there is a... Uh... Oh, there they are. Okay, great. They're in. And let me collect the information that I need for this round. Uh, might see that Bloody Queen uh, ban coming out because that Bloody Queen was kind of dominating last match. Oh yeah, I would not let... <laughs> I would not let Ryu have Bloody Queen again. <laughs> Especially in... Your... The Hunters are allowed to choose the map, correct? Yeah, but they can't pick the same map twice. So you, uh, we, it at least won't be Moonlit. But, you know, big maps are kind of her specialty and they're still ever sleeping in the... Yeah. yeah, especially with small maps too, Bloody Queen. Uh, I would not just give this hunter Bloody Queen anymore. Yeah. <laughs> Those mirrors are just precise on. <laughs> there are a couple ones where like you can you can deal with the Bloody Queen if uh you like take her into hospital or like uh, she's pretty strong in our factory. But there's a lot more junk in the way to deal with on those maps, so you got to be careful. But it is a smart ban decision. I would not. Like, the Blood Queen is just... She is known as a tight queen, but she lands all those mirrors, being able to put pressure on, on everyone, and just be able to use her teleport, too. It's just so much pressure for the survivors that... Yeah, I'll just I'll just wouldn't let Bloody Queen in the, in the hands anymore. Right. I'll take the, I'll take the next, honey. <laughs> you know, a lot of people have been saying that, like, Night Watcher is, is kind of the new meta hunter, and we have seen a couple of Night Watchers in this tournament so far. Uh, what is your opinion of him? I'm kind of curious. Oh, Night Watcher is still, I want to say, a decent hunter, even though his recent nurse, uh, uh, for you know, being with his wind, being able to slow down su survivors, um, you survivors can still move in his uh wind tunnel. So I believe he's still good. He does have great chase. He does have you know a lot of mobility, a lot of map pressure too. Uh, just because of his dashing, uh, he can possibly maybe stuff a save. But um, I wouldn't be surprised that Nightwatch would be in every tier. Everyone should know him because he is completely really simple to understand. And mm. being able to catch a survivor with just your win and slowing down, slowing down them. Just you just need every second counts, and that one hit just can just change the game. You know, I, I kind of agree that, like, you see him in every tier, but sometimes, like, when I see, when I try Night Watcher, it's like, okay, nothing's working. But when other people play Night Watcher, it's like they land every hit, so. <laughs> I'm like, so what am I doing? <laughs> I'm doing something wrong. <laughs> and I see, not, I see Night Watchers dominate, too, and I feel, and I'm like, well, I do that, too, but. I, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> he does have some really good counters, and uh, so sometimes his maps are a little sketchy, but, you know, Night Watcher is all in all a pretty decent hunter. Um, we do have that Bloody Queen band coming out. It is going to be on Red Church, and the two bands were Seer and Mercenary. So let's get into the game, shall we? On Red Church, too. This is oh, really good. For the survivors in general, but Nightwatcher being able, uh, yeah, because there's so many walls on this map, Nightwatcher will have be a little bit difficult time because they can just cut off the angles. But mm -hmm. a good Nightwatcher would be able to use like all his wins, his dashing abilities, and he is gonna spawn back gate, so possibly maybe chasing chasing the barmaid. I don't want to, not going for the composer just because he is a good kiter. He is a coder, but if he is chase, he has that kiting kit just to be able to last long. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not sure if it's very effective on uh, on Night Watcher since the, the Saku kind of pull him in or at least slow down. But, you know, the the higher tier survivors, they typically keep a lot of extra distance. I don't know how they know, but if you know, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, I know I'm in a good chase, so let me just start, start with my distance now. Mm -hmm. Let me see if we're going to opt the skill for this composer, so... Uh, composer is gonna get as far away as you know. I like you said, away from this hunter as best as he can. Gonna be able to go to uh, going to the block cipher. So really good from this team. Kiting on the block cipher, not gonna disturb cipher rush. Gonna destroy this pallet. Nightwatch gonna use his win just to try to mind game over here. But composer does have his uh, knee jerk and his ability just to get us enough distance away from this Nightwatch. Yeah, he's cutting around an area that's pretty difficult to kite in if you're not dropping all the pallets because. <laughs> He, the Nightwatcher can hop over these pallets, and uh, with his wind ability, he is slowing him down quite a bit. It's very difficult to try and trick him if you're not paying attention like that. You, you can mind game the survivors quite a bit on this pallet in particular. You gotta be very careful with uh, with how you're trying to mind game these kinds of pallets. 
Yeah, and getting the Terror Shock off uh, for this Night Watch, giving him more presence. So Rue's Night Watch will be able to get full presence, personally, maybe after the after the save, which is going to be really uh, great for Rue's Night Watch over here. Being able to have more abilities, more wins, uh, being able to get to that four stack. So going to put a lot of pressure on the survivors. We are going to see. Um, I believe that's the journalist gonna come in for a save. Gonna use our little mon I call it the little monito George as a <laughs> just to get that free save over here. But you see how journalist is just really good. Just being able to get that uh a rescue off, so there's not gonna be a double down. Mm-hmm. Oh, but you see the priestess's long portal is actually set up, so she might be able to get the uh, the teleport out. Oh, yes, the, <laughs> the buzzer is now on the other side of the map. It might not be a problem for a Night Watcher, though, because he is able to zoom across pretty quickly. Priestess is trying to get the heal off in time, but I don't think she's going to be able to make it before Night Watcher gets there. Mm -hmm. And like you said, the full presence, uh, Night Watch being able to get those dashes off. Ooh, gonna try to. He was almost close to self healing. Um, Priestess has needed like a few more seconds, but uh, Rue's gonna get that extra hit from Priestess. I'm gonna be able to uh, maybe, maybe stop the uh, stay from her. So, gonna keep putting these uh, survivors in a really difficult position. The only person that is the save is the barmaid over here. Mm hmm. And it looks like Barmaid is going through... Oh, there's actually a double save going on. There's a journalist coming in from the side. It looks like she just kind of snuck past. Unfortunately, that means the cipher progress is going to be quite slow. However, it doesn't seem too bad at this moment. There's a lot of interference running around here to try and protect this composer. And it looks like he might be able to get to church. Uh, unfortunately not. It doesn't look like it. And that you know, is he tried, uh, so close. He just ran out of his ability of dashing, but the survivors are healing up over here. Um, but they are in a pretty much difficult position. Uh, they do have the barmaid heal drink just to you know give everyone just reset the match as fast as he can. But um, Rue just kind of fighting out these survivors, knowing where probably everyone went. And I believe Journalist is gonna be caught out over here. She does have 25% healing left. Is she gonna get this healing off the oof? The little Monito just giving journalists a little bit of speed boost over here just to get that heal off. So good play over here from um, Lazy Person. Yeah, the, the teamwork from this barmaid and uh, journalist combination is actually really paying off. It's buying them a ton of time. And although the Dublin does give you a little minor deconing debuff, it's a lot more worth it to be able to live through one of those hits. Yeah, you just saw how they were able to reset the match, but they were all injured. But they were able to reset the match in the span of 10 seconds. Just because of the barmaid heal gaming able to give to her teammates, and um, Lazy Person again is going to take this kite over here while the last two people are going to start the last two ciphers over here. So Lazy Person is going to have to do a phenomenal kite. Blink is up. Is she going to risk it? But no, getting. That wasn't a terror shot? No, I'm that surprised. was crazy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is a very strong area to kite like almost any hunter and this this like i think most people call this god kite but uh it, it is very difficult for hunters to catch people but she does walk a little bit too out into the open before she's able to uh use that little kiting angle and uh he doesn't get it but he he did vault over that pallet so <laughs> i thought that was a little funny that i didn't know they could vault i didn't know that either he just said you're on your own <laughs> <laughs> but um, we do see that they, um, the journalist did kite long yeah. enough for the last cipher to get at least 83%. Um, we are gonna see Barmaid gonna come in for the save, but it is gonna it is risky to get that save against the Night Watch over here. Night Watch does have Blink, Duff has all his wind abilities, pulls, and honestly, it's just gonna be to see if this Barmaid can get this save against this Night Watch. Cipher is prime though, by the way. Yeah, like uh, that game seat reset by Barmaid was actually huge because as you can see, like that that first survivor got down pretty quickly when they found Composer instantly. However, they made a huge comeback to the point where they're about to pop the last cipher right about now now <laughs> i was waiting i was like come on pop the cipher <laughs> yeah but you know, we're gonna see grave uh barmaid over here gonna kite to graveyard um priestess does have that war port over here so it is potentially gonna be maybe be a tie or maybe if they can communicate well just to get a three-man escape we do see the war portal coming out barmaid is gonna try to get to that last war portal but nightwatch is gonna stop that oh hitting the oh, priestess no. out of war portal oh no <laughs> That could have been... That that was really bad. It was really unfortunate because right when you come out of it, I, I know Priestess has... Sometimes the, the button isn't clear when you hit to cancel the warp portal, but you can actually cancel it uh, after you start casting it. It, it was a little bit tricky there. Uh, 
but yeah, you got to communicate to your teammates like, hey, he's like, he's like right there. You got, you got to be yeah, a little like, careful. Don't, don't come through this. Don't come through this. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, Rue switching to the teleport. Um, they have not opened any of the gates yet, so this is gonna. This is a real good, uh, good uh, situation for Rue over here. He does know where one survivor is, which is the barmaid. One person is in chair, and journalist is apparently uh, gonna get a little bit confused i don't know where she's at right now at the moment she's probably maybe gonna go for the rescue but barmaid over here just gonna cause as much time as she can just to get to this pallet over here for her teammates to get the rescue and gets the hit after the pallet that is so unfortunate we yeah. hate those when you drop the pallet and you get hit after <laughs> that is, some hunters rely on that i will say that <laughs> <laughs> it's a love-hate situation but it looks like she bought a lot of time right there, enough for them to maybe open up this other door. I can't really tell what percentage is that. Oh, but Nightwatcher is there. The door is open. Hopefully they don't get vacuum cleanered out the door. And it looks oh, like there's another pull of a tie. <laughs> oh no, he missed one dash. He missed one dash to block that one wall blocked his one dash. He probably could have got maybe one, but honestly, I'm, that was that was really close. It was yeah. either way, either or. I, the Night Watch had a really good early down. Barmy was able to reset the whole match in just a span of 10 seconds and be able to kite the la um, journalists be able to kite for the last two ciphers to pop over here. Um, um, the World Portal was a game changer too over here, but honestly, good communication overall. I mean, they were the survivors were in a difficult position, but Barmy just changed that whole match over there to get at least a tie from Roos Night Watch. Yeah, that was. I, I'm really impressed by the how the survivor team managed to pull it back. You, that's stuff you don't see in solo queue. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> that was just really good commu communication from the survivors team overall. That was, that was phenomenal. That barmaid play, journalist being able to kite. Ruse Nightwatch was was really good. Honestly, he was able to kill the composer and pretty pretty fast. But barmaid tealing just was able to reset the whole match, and that was able to get the survivors a tie in in the end. Yeah, I'm I'm really like impressed with how these uh like the the under Griffins in play because that it seems like it was still actually the season just did reset so he's probably a little bit higher than a, a snake rating but yeah the the hunter did perform really really well like better than I expected for someone of snake rating <laughs> not actually a snake let me get these invites out here really quickly and then we will get on to match four we're actually making really good time right here. Um, sorry, I did. I did not record the 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 game before last. That was a oh five. Okay, sorry about that. So, team SZ. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, team SZ is catching up quite quickly to uh, um. Team AFK, who is currently in the lead. Oh, what's the points difference? So the thing is, Team AFK has played all their games. So there's no opportunities for them to get more points. They're at 42 points right now. Mm -hmm. And the rest of the teams, I posted it in the tournament information chat, but currently the, the amount of points the other two teams have is not a lot. But, you know, they have eight games between all of them today to play. And that means it's kind of up in the air for anyone to make. So SC has five points yesterday compared to the 42 AFK had. But with this match alone, they just got there's one more game and they've already gotten 12 points. So they're catching up really quick. At the end of this game, they'll have, uh, you know, if, if they get a 5K, they could or a 4K, they, they could get a ton of points off of this to propel them um into second well they're already kind of our second place now but very very close to first place mm -hmm. so let me get the hunter ireland this time i do will we go not. to uh no we don't go to a third round do we no uh no, there's just two two yeah because uh we decided to do round robin after uh, we didn't have that many teams signing up for it plus one of the teams ended up dropping out so um, I didn't think I had enough time to schedule for all the games. Better to be safe than sorry. We'll just do two games. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, all the teams are in here. Area selection is on. Let me see if I can get these. All 
I don't think the order really matters too much. You can just ban in the order. This isn't the same Koa. This is uh, <laughs> the uh, my friends have been calling it the Puppy Bowl <laughs> oh, version that's of so IDB. Cute. The Puppy Bowl. That is so cute. Oh my god, that's a cute name. That's a really good name. I'm not gonna lie. Man, I shouldn't have named it that. So I, I didn't think of it. They, they were asking me when I was submitting this to the NGP Discord. They're like, what are you going to call it? I'm like, I don't know. Does it doesn't need a name. <laughs> I don't even know what like IVL stands for. Like, okay, Identity like League. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Wait a second. That's a little too simple. I know. I was like, IBT? Like, what is IBT? What is the I, team? I, Identity 5 tournament. <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> That's yeah. it? Yeah. <laughs> All right, let me see if I can get, uh, do we get to pick the map? Yes. All right, it's going to be hospital. Then we can Ooh, get Sacred one. Heart hospital. Yeah, usually I'm survivors so love this map. Key. I don't know why, but like, it's my feeling that survivors love hospital. <laughs> unless unless Orlando has a plan to just drop peepers into hospital. We d That's true. Like and, you, and it, <laughs> you need two peepers to cover the entirety of hospital. And even if you do drop the peepers, like some survivors are really, really good at knowing where you are. I don't know how they do it, but it's like the the they they know where the hunter is going to drop down on them and stuff. I'm like, how do you know where I am at all times? <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> it's like they have the peepers. <laughs> They just, I don't know, they're probably just listening to their heartbeat. <clears throat> mm. They're like, mm, it is strong on this side. Let me move our way. <laughs> heartbeat loud means he's closer. <laughs> to some extent, <laughs> that is true. Ban OP. Opera singer, I think. Ban opera singer? Oh, that is true. Opera singer is really, I mean. She's kind of weird to move good. up. She's good in general, but I mean, sacred it does. There's yeah. so many obstacles just to dash outside, but if you go into two story, it does hurt her just a little bit. But she's able to catch up just because the walls, like just narrow walls and narrow buildings, being able to go up the stairs too as well. Mm -hmm. Let me get those two survivor bands. They're going to be priestess and enchantress. Okay. Does not want to deal with that enchantress from from Leo's memory. She is kind of a menace. Like enchantress, I don't think I've seen her too much in uh like pro play until recently. Like, um, well at least not in the 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 Koa scene. I really only watch the Koa scenes. Like, I should. Everyone's like, all the big tournaments are happening right now. Like, Worlds for League is happening right now. Uh, oh, yeah. Like IV IVL just happened. Like, there's a like Koa is about to happen in a couple of months. I know. I just remember just. Just being there. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <clears throat> a lot of bands, not enough band slots. Yes, normally in the the veterans bracket there will be a lot more bands, but in the beginners bracket, um, sometimes hunters don't have enough hunters in their pools. Sometimes survivors don't play enough variety of survivors. So uh, we're just going to do like very very simple picks and bands and that way everyone can play what they like at least for one round maybe two <laughs> all right and we are getting started this is the latch last match between team sz and team dream bubbles next match that's coming up is i think it's team dream bubbles versus oh uh, uh, no no sorry let me see I have to look back on my list, but uh, Team Identity VTubers is going to be up against one of these two teams. I have to check my schedule Identity a bit. Identity <laughs> VTubers, let's go. <laughs> yeah, it's, no, it's Identity VTubers because uh, they're oh, all Identity VTubers. VTubers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry, didn't mean to get the name wrong. All right, the game is getting started. It is a bloody queen pick on a uh, hospital. Like I mentioned, it is kind of tough for her to get on those stairs with the mirror, but I've seen some bloody queens make it work. Let's see if Arlen can make it work. Yeah, it's on and to the lawyer. I'm surprised they didn't give lawyer ruins and cheerleader shack just because cheerleader has a better ability just to kite, but I think they're trying to go for that hiding strategy against this bloody queen. 
I think so too. Like a, a lot of survivors, um, especially at this rank, have not seen the area selection yet, so they might not know how to utilize the the stronger spots for certain hunters. Uh, and she does walk right past the lawyer and looks for a cheerleader. Uh, it looks like she's still kind of hunting out for the lawyer, but she does manage to find a trail. And cheerleader is just gonna wait for the blood queen just to make the first move. Teleporter on the other side of the of the wall over here. Um, Dropping the pilot just to give a nice distance, and we do see Tea Leader does have a uh, broken window, so gonna be able to be able to kite this Bloody Queen a little bit longer um, than as for the lawyer. So I'm pretty sure they just wanted the the cheerleader to kite than the lawyer. They did want it to make sure that the lawyer was able to hide and be safe. So good mm -hmm. job from cheerleader kiting in the in a good area against the Bloody Queen over here on ruins. Right, these mirrors are really hard to place, and you can see that her utilizing that speed buff to get so much distance actually from uh, the Bloody Queen. But it looks like she might take a hit here if she doesn't have another speed boost coming up. Uh, yeah, looks like it. This is going to be the first hit on the survivors, but there's a zero the protector, and that's yeah, came in. <laughs> Was there a seer band? I I don't remember. I it was uh, Enchantress. Oh, that's right. They didn't ban Seer this time. And, uh, they didn't ban Seer. But the, that's the amount of coordination that you need for Seer players. Like, I, I honestly didn't expect that coming out, but that was really well played. You can see that yeah, sandwich hit. Yeah, that, that was yeah. a really good hit from the, the mirrors. But now you need another mirror just down them. They already completed one Cypher. Oh, and she does have Blink, so honestly, good job. Honestly, be able to... Three Cyphers did pop. But, you know, honestly, uh, Bloody Queen does have that ma uh, mirror pressure, and they, she did get this here out of the way, so gonna be able to probably be able to pressure that one Cypher near over there by um, front gate, or is that uh, back corner over there? Mm -hmm. I believe and, that's back corner, yes. And I do want to remind you that spraying and emoting is not allowed in this tournament. Like, if I see it happen again, I do want to give you, you guys at least a warning, so uh, please do not do so while you're in the match. We are going to see a rescue from First Officer over here. Going to cause as much time, but he's not going to save before half. They decided to save after half. Mm -hmm. I guess they just wanted to make sure that you're able to um, get as much as decoding in, and they're going to potentially, they're really relying on this body block just to get to that one pallet. That one pallet is up, so that one pallet is probably going to possibly maybe be a game changer for this team over here. Uh, Bloody Queen is just gonna hit the first officer. Tide is activated over here. Um, we're gonna see them right now in the open. Cheerleader does have two speed boosts. The last cipher, they are down to one last cipher. It is at uh, 50%, I believe. Gonna cause enough time. She does have two speed boosts, but now it just comes down to Bloody blocking over here. Yeah, I think Bloody Queen might be able to double hit them with the. Oh, it looks like she does switch, and she hits the first officer instead of the cheerleader. That body block is going to buy them a lot of time for them to finish that cypher. It's actually only at 65%. It's a lot less than I thought, but uh, unless she's able to catch the cheerleader in time, it, that, that cypher is going to be complete. Mm -hmm. Like when just making, just being precautious, you didn't know of how much the cypher is. I'm just going to chair this first officer over here, but we do know that cheerleader does have wanted order. She does know, and... Um, just gonna pressure the cypher just gonna kick off a uh, 2z over here uh the seer and gonna switch targets again so she orlando is in a pressure situation just trying to switch targets uh gonna try to hit at least everyone as best they can because this is what you have to do the last cypher is almost done it's almost prime and orlando is in a tough situation over here two survivors are at the last of the exit gates but orlando does have to be careful it is a seer so those seer owls are gonna be um gonna be getting farmed yeah, this is one of those really rough situations where when you're a hunter, you don't really know uh, whether to go camp that last person out or to go for that cypher, but it looks like she did make the right decision and looking for the cheerleader because she is on her death chair. Yeah, cheerleader is on the kite as best as she can. Oh, and Orlando accidentally missing the blink, but cheerleader knew, and honestly, if she blinked over i mean cheerleader probably probably would have predicted just because of that speed boost they do know where dungeon is cheerleader is on the race over here will the dungeon be open in time the exit gate is almost open t2 is almost there but she does have a little bit one speed boost over here so she's able to get dungeon she needs to dodge just one mirror bloody queen does switches but the speed boost from cheerleader is just too overpowered it is so incredibly strong the slowdown oh. does <laughs> does get her in the end however it bought her so much time for her team to to escape out through the the other door 
That's what I was saying. Cheerleader has been hitting OP this whole time. I, I've, I've said it on my stream multiple times, and uh, no one believed me, but see you here firsthand. <laughs> <laughs> and even and even with the nerf that she just recently got, you can see that she is just still viable. <laughs> mm hmm. A good, really good performance on both teams. She did manage to get one this time, and so that is going to be the match one or set one, I should say, for. Team Dream Bubbles versus Team SC. So we're going to be taking a short break soon in order for me to get the next team set up. Uh, yeah, great job to both teams. Let's yeah, go. honestly, it was really great. Both teams did really good. And, you know, honestly, getting one isn't that bad. You still just want to get points enough for your team. Right. And there's still multiple chances for you to earn points here. It is... Uh, it's actually SC is doing really well now. They just got uh, 10, 12. This was uh, 15 points in that one game. So I will be updating the, the scoreboard in a little bit. We will go to our Be Right Back screen. I'll be playing some music for you guys as we organize the next part. Uh, yeah, and we'll see you guys in a little bit. And you know what? While we're here... Oh, there we go. All right. Area selection is going on. I'm going to pause. I was, just a to, I was just about to ask you that. <laughs> hmm? Oh, yeah. <laughs> did I remember? <laughs> I know. I know. I did turn it on. Okay. We'll wait for a second for them to select their hunter. And then uh, we'll, we'll get the game going soon. <clears throat> I will be pausing the music, so there we go. I'm so, like, I'm really <laughs> impressed. I'm really um, surprised that, you know, speaking of the meta, uh, mm -hmm. the veterans are coming back into the meta now just because of one hunter. Can you believe that? Just one hunter, which is Sangria, so OP, so powerful, can just bring back the old veterans just because of speed boost and hiding. Who would have thought hiding would be meta now? <laughs> Honestly, yeah. Like, on uh, the most of the matches that I lose... In, in like the upper ranks it's usually because i don't find the first chase like the not finding the first chase is actually so annoying that it wastes almost like a full minute sometimes if you got to change targets that quickly so yeah if you're a good hider you can turn the tide of a tournament pretty quickly or uh the the tide of a match uh we are getting started it, it is his signature hunter the lucino um <laughs> you know yeah he is you know is not as uh, uh it's not uh how do you say it's not it's usually be careful he's really slept on just being able to get that distance and jump mm -hmm. but he's really, starting really far away from the lawyer actually i wonder how he's going to go about uh doing his first hunt here i'm kind of curious but you don't actually see who the survivors are when you do this area selection right it's kind of revealed right afterwards you're probably gonna opting optimize go for this here. That's not gonna deal probably with the factory. It's just so OP, or probably just gonna maybe oh. chase the rescuer. He looked at first officer first. That was a really almost hit. Whoa. I I've, I've been yeah. hit by that because like the landing time for first off or uh, for Lucino to come down and do that hit, it's actually really quick. <laughs> it catches me off guard sometimes too. We are gonna see that he is gonna be wasting this first officer's watch. So first officer is going to do as best as he can. They're going to be causing much time for his team to decode. Um, he is, does have that second watch, so um, just cause as much time. Going to loot this OP area that is really good against um, Evil Reptilian over here with no presence. So um, first officer doing as much as good. Not even be able to drop the pallet. Just looping up this, looping this window back and forth. So great, uh, good job for um, first officer over here. Mm -hmm. First officer is a very difficult chase for most hunters. If you don't have a way to like get rid of that pocket watch the moment he pops it he's usually best to change targets right then because you know like okay well he's three seconds behind which means he could be literally anywhere around me mm -hmm. and blink is up from this lucino so is he optimizing gonna change targets right now the uh, cypher rush is going really good on the survivor's hand but uh the evil reptilian just gonna go up and spot out this lawyer over here he is or it does be able to see that map, so he is able to see where the hunter is at all times. Gonna create enough distance, and but Blink is up for uh, Eva Reptilian over here. 
Is he mm -hmm. gonna get the ch Ooh, he vaulting that because he knows he can't get Terror Shock. I completely forgot. Yeah, <laughs> it is a lawyer <laughs> thing. <laughs> oh, he's able to hop through all these pallets and get right back onto the lawyer. He might get a second hit here, but you gotta be careful. There is a seer in this game. Oh, close. He swung a little bit wrong angled on that mirror. Luchino's attacks are a little bit awkward. That they aren't as long as certain hunters like White Wuchong. The animation happens very quick. He does have a pretty good fast uh, hit, uh, hit animation, so which I from this lawyer going to be able just to uh, drop down this pallet just to create enough distance. Having broken windows, this is why I think broken windows is still good, but oh no, actually lawyer does have broken windows flywheel, so oh. he has no borrowed time. That's really interesting. I think I have seen that by a lawyer earlier this tournament, and that's a really, really risky play on their part, but... Uh, it looks like he's m going to go down right around here, unless the Seer is able to... Oh! Who knows? The flywheel! The flywheel just saved him right there just to get enough to pile it. It looks like they were optimizing Lawyer to get chased, so he does have that Broken Windows uh, f uh, flywheel build, so no borrowed time. So um, we're going to see... Is that the Enchantress? Enchantress going to come in and get some stacks. The Survivors are on the last two ciphers, 180%, and even uh, getting that last hit, but... The last cipher is almost primed over here, and is it going to be a basement play? It is! Are I jinxed it! Yeah. <laughs> There's no way! Yeah. The first basement of the tournament goes to Lucino. <laughs> Alright. I I jinxed it. It was my bad. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I see. And oh, here it is! Gonna... <laughs> the, the... Basement play is going to be able to get the... No... Ooh, he hit the chair! Oh, he hit the chair, so that's going to be very unfortunate. No, hey, remember, Warrior doesn't have borrowed time. Yeah, I think he actually hit the first officer there. Uh, yeah, yeah, first officer just healed up from it, but it does not matter in the end because Lawyer is out of that basement completely. He seems to have changed to teleport. Yeah, yeah. he trumped oh, over yeah, to teleport, does. and uh, but he is on the Enchantress right now. There's no one by this door currently, um, and it looks like he really wants this Enchantress now. Yeah, but dungeon is middle. Um, you see that Enchantress is making her way towards middle. Luciano does have these great jumps. The gate is 45% um, right now. He does have teleport. Yeah, honestly, he doesn't... If He should have just honestly just teleported. And he chooses to do so. The gate is not even open yet. So he has three survivors in his point of view. Uh, gonna try to at least try to get one. He does break that pallet and ooh, misses the swing. But the Seer does have the owl just to get enough distance. Just to be able to kite. And they are making their way to the gate. Oh, the door is open now, and first officer uses tide ability. Let's see if he's able to tie. He tides himself out the door. That first officer pocket watch ability does give himself tide for the time being. It gives him like I think three seconds of it if he managed to be hit while in the pocket watch. It's just enough time for him to get out the door, and it looks like Enchantress is all the way on the other side of the map. Don't know if Lucino can make it all the way over there, but it's yeah, it's not looking good. He, there, it, it's probably going to be a yeah, it's probably going to be a four person escape. Enchantress does have a slower... No, I don't think she has any debuffs on the oh. door. No, it's just that door was just automatically getting straight open. But, I mean, they optimized Lawyer just to kite as long as they can. And you saw that they knew what just Optimus Hygrid was going to be. So Broken Windows Flywheel just to be able to kite that long. And honestly, that was just really good play from Survivors. Even though Hikaru did Jinx Sun to get the basement play. I did, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> that was on me, you guys. <laughs> you know, it, I mean, it was very, very late into the game at that point. You know, basement is very, very strong for hunters, but you got to utilize it properly. Uh, most of the time, like, you need to use that little drop down area to get those hits. But as you can see, Enchantress is already down there in that basement with First Officer. So it's three people running around down there. It can get a little hectic when they're on the last cipher and it's already primed. If he got that lawyer hit, it would have been very, very difficult for him to. Uh, to do a second rescue, he even he would even be able to manage a tie because that was lawyer's second. Uh, he would have put it lawyer on the second chair in the basement, and then it would leave him free to teleport to the door and get someone else. And even though it's basement, Lucino almost was so close to stuff that enchantress. Like he got the jump, he got the hit on off the jump, like the stomp, and then she just. I mean, she had another stun, so she possibly maybe would have gotten the save, possibly not. But I mean. You just saw how well um, SD's survivors, they knew what they're doing. They knew what target they were going to get chased. 
and it was really good for on their part to get a four man escape even with you know the close gate over there it was literally just a mind game to see if he can probably hit the seer but since first officer you can't see he hit the first officer and tide effect did come into play mm -hmm. it was uh if he managed to do a ground pound there he might have been able to down the seer actually because i think the seer took a ground pound hit in, in the first place that was uh a really close hit and then he triggered the owl a little bit late so he wouldn't i think there's a 20 second differential before he can activate a second owl whether he had it or not i don't know but he couldn't have turned it on towards the end and you know that aoe hit does do a lot towards the end <laughs> yeah but i mean i think he was just i think he missed it by one jump he was so close he could he can jump over the gate but i mean he was off by one jump mm -hmm. so close that was really close if he got that um that seer with the stomp, I mean, he probably would have maybe got one or two. <clears throat> We're just getting the next match set up. It's going to be Rue on Hunter. As you all saw from last game, they played a really good bloody queen. Uh, and I think they were Nightwatcher next. I forget already, but... <laughs> uh, let's... Oh, yeah, he's... Bloody Queen, Nightwatch. So I'm seeing just to get points. I mean, Ru showed that she ain't a tight queen, so she got a four elimination last uh, last match, correct? I think I'm so. Like, yeah. So probably many might go for the Bloody Queen or maybe Nightwatch, because you know both are still good on this map. Nightwatch, you know, just want to stay away from that factory. Bloody Queen just able to mirror anywhere. Mm -hmm. So very good tie hunters, but you know, like. Tie hunters are tie hunters because they they can't like I, I think if you just cipher rush them and do like a decent 60 second kite most of the time that's like that's it for them they can't do more than a tie <laughs> mm -hmm. surprise um i mean yesterday was there any like oh no you did talk about that how we haven't seen any like sangrias dream witches clerks yeah I mean, and and it's still good for a win just being able to stuff saves i mean naiads too i mean and, I mean, but this is really good. You know, they are good with the hunters, and Rue is showing with Bloody Queen as well. So, mm -hmm. and with like, we have seen one Nyad, I think maybe two, but Nyad's kind of difficult to like if you don't know the specific patterns of how to like cut off different areas. If it's even like a little bit off, survivors are gonna like abuse every little like small opening in that to do a transition. So, <laughs> water do be accumulating. Water do be op yeah i didn't know i was going swimming <laughs> i didn't i don't think like i've seen any of the the really big pay to lose accessories just yet you do have to be careful with those oh yeah that um you've seen the lily pad things for uh naiad that's really pretty no. but it makes it really obvious when the puddles are closed <laughs> oh for oh really i did not see that i had to look at that yeah i'll, sh I'll show you later but it's it's very very pretty it's the the pads are like there's big lily pads and they're gr like dark bluish greenish when they first come out, but when they close it, it turns bright pink. So it makes it very obvious where the puddles are. Let me see if I can mess with them for that band. Uh, I put the question in the chat. Let's see where it's at. Give me one second to get the information from them. Oh, there we go. It's Moonlit and a Seer Band. Okay. And Ru chose this uh, map, correct? Yes. Uh, the Hunter? Yes. My C double bloody queen again. <laughs> I'm feeling it. It's uh, <laughs> it's gonna be a little rough, but you know, okay. like honestly, bloody queen is good on this map. But there are a couple of locations where you can do really well against the bloody queen here. Uh, one of them yeah. being that that two story area. If you can get to it, it's it's very very strong for survivors. Like and with honestly, just go ahead, go sorry. Uh, like with most hunters, it's very difficult to get up those stairs. Like uh, just anywhere there's stairs, hunters have a great fear of them. <laughs> <laughs> but who knows maybe maybe Rue will teleport up the stairs because there are some certain good bloody queen spots to where you can just be like teleport and just 
meet a survivor right up there and they're like that that will catch you them off guard it's caught me off guard too as well but you gotta be mm. really precise with your mirrors but seeing all the mirror placements from um last match from um rue i mean she had yeah. uh, she had everything so i wouldn't be surprised if she knows a few tricks up her sleeves <laughs> right <clears throat> So I'm just taking a sip of water. Throat's getting a little bit dry here. <laughs> <laughs> no, I have my water too. Don't worry. <laughs> All right. Area selection is underway. We're going to change over to the game screen. And then as you guys thought, it was going to be Bloody Queen on Moonlight. A very strong map for her. But the, the survivor side seems to be really adept at taking care of bloody queen we got a priestess on moonlight which is a really strong character a lawyer a doctor and an embalmer what do you think of this team comp it's pretty interesting <laughs> it feels like they're just trying to go for a tie going with hiding i'm pretty sure they want the doctor chase first they did choose now this is a weird spot selection but they did choose a really good selection to wear if doctor does get that roller coaster priestess can teleport through uh, between the the lake and go to second stop so doctor would be from first stop to third stop and a mm. bomber has a coffin so honestly i kind of get and see what their idea is so let's see if they're able to pull it pull it off he's actually headed for embalmer first em embalmer doesn't seem to be moving at the moment uh i i don't know if there's a disconnection on his on his part but it's the bloody queen doesn't notice him so that was a pretty lucky break <laughs> yeah <laughs> A you know, I, just, uh, <laughs> <in a> move. <laughs> yeah, I, I thought it would have been up there too, but nope. it looks like they're connected now. Mm -hmm. Oh, she's mirrored right onto <laughs> the lawyer, and she managed to get a very, very early, early hand on, on him, and he is rotating away from the. Oh, the lawyer did get down yeah. right there. Yeah, being able to kill the lawyer in just one mirror, so. Good job from Rue over here, being able to down the lawyer, and the lawyer did have borrowed time, so maybe they were optimizing to just hide and not be able to kite, but a little bit, uh, maybe a little bit miscommunication right there, just because, you know, Bloody Queen mirrors so long, so far, that it was just, Rue just taking advantage of seeing them to quote that one cypher and be able to mirror and kill them in two hits, I mean, one mirror. Mm-hmm. You know, they do know where the spawn location of the lawyer is, but she did look for a bomber first. That's uh, kind of an interesting situation. Doctor is here for the rescue, but I don't know if she's able to get to this rescue on time. Actually, she it looks like she's going to get it before half if she doesn't get this mirror off. The mirrors have been perfect. Let's see if she's able to get Lawyer in time before she gets to that roller coaster. It doesn't look like it. Lawyer might be able to get to the coaster. And uh, actually, no, it doesn't look like she's going to be able to make it. It's going to be a... Not much of a rebound here. This Lawyer doesn't have any kiting abilities. Yeah, especially with Tide. He is... They did optimize Lawyer to be the rescuer. So, but Doctor does have one order. She did um, use her self-heal. I'm sorry, she did use her syringe to heal. So, kind of resetting the match. But Rue getting the nice mirror hit over here on the Doctor from that far away. Just because Wanted Order just showed the location. And is she going to switch? Just It looks like she, Rue might be able just to switch. No, she's just going to make sure that the Lawyer is going to be here and secure that first kill. Mm hmm But luckily enough, the doctor is a doctor, so she's able to self-heal. You can see Embalmer kind of coming off the cipher, but it's a little too late. The, the, the Bomber is on the other side of the map, so I don't think he's going to be making it over there in time. Oh, the doctor did take the portal, but that portal goes to the other side of the map. And it is a doctor, so she can pick herself up pretty quickly. And Bloody Queen has no way of getting over there now. Yes, her mirror is still on cooldown, so we, she may be, yes, not curious, she may be able to fast heal herself and use that syringe, but um, Bloody Queen just going to commit to that doctor, just hoping maybe to just catch her before she gets that self-heal. Mirror is up, so is uh, Lily going to be able to get up in time before she needs to self-heal now? She gets up, but oh. Rue just hitting her down, and last effort will not be, I'm sorry, a self-heal would not be in place for doctor anymore. <laughs> Luckily enough, she is a doctor, so she does hit, she does heal up pretty quickly, and there is an embalmer in the area, uh, but it looks like they are going to pick up Doctor. Um, Cypher progress is looking pretty good, 
it's accelerated decoding. There are there is one survivor down right now, but I think two of the ciphers are almost done. Yes, yeah, so, so even though with uh, two ciphers is almost done, they do need one more. It is first time Chera on Doctor, and Ru is gonna. This gonna be a little early save coming from Priestess, and Ru's just gonna optimize to go for the Priestess over here, uh, just so because you know she does have a few more portals and she does have a mirror, so she does spot out Doctor and gets a double down off the rescue. But the coffin, are they gonna coffin? No, they're probably just gonna wait on Chair, so Ru's not gonna be able to pick up the Doctor just so she can teleport again across the whole map. Mm -hmm. And you have to be a little bit careful in this situation because the, the hunter does know that the doctor does not have self pickup anymore. <clears throat> Bruce is going to come over here and Bomber is going to rotate off. Remember, doctor, like you said, doesn't have self heal. The coffin is on doctor, so it's a little bit hard to predict it for these survivors. Bruce is going to use this mirror just to come up to this and Bomber over here. He can't use his coffin and he does have borrow time as well, so they probably predicted. Um, for Doctor and Priestess to be kiting, but Rue just not not going with that tactic. It's gonna go straight for um, the lawyer and the uh, and the and the, the Priestess over here. Mm -hmm. These mirrors have been really on point lately. At that point, I didn't know she was in the house either. Oh, she misses a blink. But is the Embalmer is in a great situation right now because of this this era with that mirror. It's very easy for her to get it down. It, it's kind of in the open, but also kind of not. But un unfortunately, Doctor has no self pickup, and Priestess goes down. It's looking like a 4K for Rue from SZ. Yeah, and good job. Like I, she again hitting every mirror, every mirror on these survivors over here, being able to. Um, Finish this match with three ciphers left. Uh, dungeon is not close to Doctor. She won't be able to crawl all the way to Dungeon. Self heal has been used, and Rue, look at the distance that Bloody Queen just does on 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 her best map, being able to be at, at second stop all the way all the way in ten in like a span of two seconds. Mm -hmm. So Rue showing good on how well this Doctor, I'm sorry, on how well her Bloody Queen is on on Moonlit especially. <laughs> Oh, oh, actually, she might be able to cough in. Yeah, you, you can actually cough yeah. in at this point. Oh, oh no, wait, no. You won't be able to. You won't be able to cough in. Mm -hmm. They might yeah, have had to cough uh, in. Embalmer was in chair. Oh, Embalmer can't cough in while in chair? I did not no, know that. I didn't. I, I remember that one. I, I first completely forgot that Embalmer cannot cough in while you're in chair. That is. Hey, that would have been that would be really good. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, because I mean, the self heal. The hatch was like uh pretty close to where that was too. So, <laughs> and the bomber was almost dead on chair. Yeah, and it's, yeah, honestly, and doctor with the fast healing, be able to take at least one hit with the veteran speed boost, probably made Bane on the mirror. Maybe doctor probably would have got dungeon. but mm -hmm. you know, and bomber abilities won't let you do anything while you're in chair. <laughs> yeah. It seemed like there was a little bit of an issue at the start of the game, but I, I think everyone kind of started moving again before anyone was caught. Uh-oh, can anyone hear them? Is there an issue with our sound? Hello, hello? It seems to be okay. I think we're fine. I think we're A-OK. -okay. <laughs> yeah. Let me get us into the next match. We're making really great time. We might be able to finish early today. And let me invite the Team SC for round two. So this time we're going to need uh, two hunter or two survivor bands. One map pick plus one hunter band. Mm -hmm. And this way. Uh, with this kind of rule set, you can see that like the first uh, the first match, the hunter has every option available to them. Plus, they get the map selection. It gives the hunter a clear advantage. But in the second match, the survivors get to pick the map. Plus, they get to ban a hunter, giving them a little bit more of an advantage. So, you know, fair is fair. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a hunter maid, yeah. but let let it be known that I am impartial. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it looks like it's a Priestess and Enchantress band. <clears throat> Just 
waiting on. Oh, it's going to be an ever sleeping map. Interesting. Nine priestess. Yeah. Uh, no. Nope. So tremendously. Yeah. Good on that <laughs> map. Have you seen the like yeah. the the forced teleportation spots? Like, oof. I have nightmares. <laughs> <laughs> Where you go from, you take a portal, and then you're like, why is there another portal? And you're on the other side. <laughs> exactly. And the, 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 yeah. the, the skinny legend priestess is able to, like, get away from the middle section. <laughs> Luckily, yeah, I... I need priestess. Yeah. yeah. That. Luckily, I play a lot of hunters that are, like, pretty easy to deal with them, like, breaking wheel or clerk, and just, you can knock down those portals from across the map, or uh, just drive Where's right through them. Or I don't play Sangria. I I uh, no? I ain't that kind of hunter. No, I ain't about that life. <laughs> I I used to, but then like she kind of feels too wonky to play on PC. I, I feel like when you can when you can tap on her things on mobile, it makes it a lot easy for her. Um it, it makes it a lot easier for her to uh like get to one area to another, but on PC, it's based on your camera, not where you tap. So that's probably why it's a little bit more difficult. Like oh. if, if you may, you have to like finagle your camera in such a way that if the two lines are together, it has to be so precise or you lose your skill. So it's really obnoxious, but for a phone, like you can just tap on it. Right. And then you immediately go to the next section. Plus she just got another major nerf. So I don't really know how strong she is at the moment. <clears throat> I mean, I, I think she's still decent. She's not great, mm. but she is ability possibly maybe. She could she still be played. She's mm. still fast. Even though they nerfed her movement, like her fast abilities in every aspect, she can still possibly pull out a win. It's just going to be a little bit more harder. Yeah. The, but yes, I do agree. Her nerfs did hurt her this time. It, it was more or less the like difficulty to play on PC with the, the two intersecting lines. That's kind of like why I don't really like playing Dream Witch either. Because she requires a lot of like the the time it takes to switch between your leeches is so difficult. So, um, looks like game two is on underway though. We got Lucino once again on Ever Sleeping. Is he good on this map? I don't actually know. Uh, yeah, I mean you can be able to you can jump on the two the corner house. You can jump on the two story. True. There's nothing blocking your point of view. And if they cut in the open, well, Lucino is going to be jumping in the open. <laughs> mm -hmm. Gonna get that. Gonna get that stomp uh, on any survivors. Right, I'm and then I'm surprised they um they they banned opera singer, they didn't ban his Lucino, so probably maybe he did know opera singer, uh, and going with his again signature Lucino. I think yeah, I don't know. I've never seen Lupin play Lucino before, or uh, opera singer before, so it is a really interesting ban. But opera singer is the strongest hunter right now, so I I get not wanting to play against her. <laughs> yeah. Oh, a reindeer <laughs> skin. This is really yeah, interesting. Pretty nice scene. Getting into the holidays. Oh, true. But... The... Some put on the Mariah Carey. <laughs> <laughs> but not going to choose for the bar maid. Gonna go straight for a lawyer. But lawyer does see um, Luchino gonna see this is how good lawyer is. Being able to hide and seeing, being able to see where the, the vision is on where the hunter is, being able to rotate, but does spot a little bit of blood trail, and Lawyer is gonna start the kite over here in Corner House, being away from all his survivors just to be able to get as much decoding as he can. Mm -hmm. And like you saw last time, this Lawyer is optimized for kiting with no borrowed time at all. And uh, he's got that map, so he sees exactly where Lucino is at the whole time. He's able to do the oh, perfect yes. kite right here, through the yes, blind spots. Forgot. He, they did optimize to do flywheel and broken windows again. So, and especially on an OP area over here, corner house is completely um, survivor sided kiting here. So being able to use your windows, pallets, drop stuff, and since he does have flywheel, what blink is up over here. So, I mean, it's just a tremendous kiting spot for um, us the survivors. Where? Getting the blink as a first hit. Oh. Oh. He was able to flywheel that, and actually the, the knee jerk and the, the flywheel is doing a lot of work for him. Um, he is a kiting lawyer, so... Uh -huh. <laughs> oh! Oh, unfortunately getting Palestine on his way down. I didn't know Doesn't it could... Give the lawyer... 
I did not know you could do that either. Giving Lori the kite enough longer enough. Two ciphers have been popped. One cipher is almost going to be done, and the another two survivors are going to the last cipher. Lori doing a pretty tremendous kite over here. Yeah, the the kiting is doing really well, especially for a survivor that doesn't have any kiting abilities. But you know that knee jerk is doing so much work right now. Broken windows and knee jerk. That is kind of a crazy combination. He does finally get the hit, and there's a wasted owl. So it's things are looking up for Lucino. Once he starts to get that first presence, he's going to be able to do a lot more damage with his abilities. Yes, and they did waste owl, so Lucino does not have to worry about that seer out being into play. But we do see that lawyer is kite on the last cipher. Is he going to choose to change targets? Or not, but no lawyer's gonna use this um, area, so he won't be able to jump. And gonna gonna do some dual kiting again uh, with the gardener and lawyer. She does have that bubble just to maybe probably absorb the hit, so we probably might see in a body block. Oh, careful with that tram too! It's about to move. So <laughs> I know someone Lucino size could actually get run over if they're not careful enough. So sorry, I disconnected a little bit. <laughs> oh, are you are you back in? Yeah, I'm back. I'm All so right. sorry. No, no, it's you're you're good. Uh oh, he's still on the lawyer here. There's no owl to be optimized at the moment, and uh, oh, it looks like he paused for a little bit, but um, a bit of lag. yeah, if he does manage to get lawyer, he can maybe get a draw here still with that detention. Mm -hmm. I remember, like you said, they optimized for lawyers to go kiting, so if this lawyer goes down, there is no borrow time. So they it can go into... Oh, they decided to pop the cypher. He sees that lawyer doesn't have borrow time, but he did bring the tension, so it is going to just be my games over here. Lawyer using that knee-jerk kiting phenomenally over here. Going to go into an area where Lucino can't be able to jump and going to waste as much time as he can. Flywheel is up, so how... How um, is this going to be as matter as, as much as kind of long enough for his uh, teammates to open that exit gate over there? Yeah, he definitely will be able to get a uh, lawyer over here. Oh no, the blink did not go off either. And the, oh, the, and tra the trap, oh, the <laughs> trap was almost hit him. <laughs> yeah, you need to get rid of these pallets as soon as you can. Sometimes it's better just to cut off those pallets, and hopefully the hatch is in here. It doesn't look like it, so there is going to be a hit on the. Ooh, the flywheel is actually timed really well. But I don't think he's going to get much further with this detention hit on him. There's still 60 seconds left in detention, and two people already left, so... It looks like they're just going to get the 1k right here, and then uh, that will be that. Oh, the barmaid's sticking around, but if she sticks around and finds out, then... That could, it's, she's yeah. still got 50 seconds. <laughs> 50 seconds into detention, maybe there's probably maybe want to wait, but it is a lawyer on chair, I mean, uh, not even halfway through, so Sorry. she can't wait these the, the detention here, maybe get a, a body block and heal herself up, and probably maybe do a four-man escape, so if not, then honestly, just would we'll just leave like she's just yeah. doing right now. Looks <laughs> like she's just sleeping. Leave. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, but uh, good job again. Yeah, I see. SC does really well. I mean, when you're doing it that risky of a play, you're kind of uh, not having borrowed time. You're kind of like opting to sacrifice your first survivor no matter what. So um, kudos to him for doing a really good kite. But when you have all the resources to kite with in the strongest spot, it's uh, it's pretty difficult for any hunter to catch up to them. You got to be a little careful with that two-story spot. Lucino actually can do a thing by jumping up in the two-story. And if you're a little bit more careful with like checking to see if they vault that window first, uh, th like if, if you could tell from that lawyer when he vaults the window, um, a lot of survivors will wait for the hunter to see if they drop down that middle section first. Because if they do, then the hunter can actually get a head start on you uh, when you drop that uh, that section. So. And the hunter, the the lawyers seem to go just straight for that window every single time. So there's always that. Yeah, yeah. You saw how even in the arms factory that this team knew how to kite this uh, kite even rotillion. Basically, they just use um, tall buildings and stuff where he was able to jump, and he got looped around by the windows. So I mean, uh, good job from uh, SZ survivors over here. They knew how to play it, and they kited in pretty great areas to where you can kite Lucino. Mm hmm. Get the invites going now for the last game of this set. And then the game after this will be Identity VTubers versus Dream Bubbles. 
Dream Bubbles. <laughs> That's so cute name. Yeah. I don't really, uh, oh, actually, hold on. We gotta get um, the hunter in here. And then we'll do the total calculations after I update the score. I'm just doing it on like a notepad as we go. <laughs> Give me one second. Making a little bit of space here. Let's see if uh, they get their hunter in here. Maybe I should just add the hunters later on. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right. Do we get a uh, map pick? Plus one hunter ban. Turn on area selection. There we go. We got Ruin here. Perfect. All right. It looks like we are starting perfectly on schedule. This is great. Even a little bit ahead of schedule. That's great. Oh, is this, this is the last one for this team, right? For yep. this team? Uh, this is SZ's very last match, and uh, the tournament calculations will happen after the... There's still one more set between those last two teams. <clears throat> hey, Ireland. All right. That, that is... Uh, we're we're going to have this one go off as soon as we get a map pick and a hunter band. You know, is it possible to get shoutouts for all the participants who are also streamers in this chat right now? Um, let me see if my mods are here. Yeah, Solar Aki. Church and Bloody Queen ban. Okay, and then we need two survivor bans. Make sure to support your, your favorite IDV streamers as well. Uh, the ones who are participating, the ones who are shoutcasting, all my mods are also streaming IDV from time to time, so <laughs> make sure to check out everyone's channels, you guys. Um, let me get this last one going. Seer and Mercenary Ban. All right, we're ready to go. You know, they were playing uh, Nightwatcher last time Bloody Queen got banned, so I'm, I'm guessing we're going to see probably another Nightwatcher pick. Uh, Seer and Mercenary are both very, very uh, good against Night Watcher as he does not have a double hit mechanic and he is also very, very quick on his feet to get across the map. Whether it be a mirror or a dash, those two <laughs> characters are very quick. Oh, it's Red Church, so... I... Oh, like the same from last match. I mean, like how... Ru, what, Nightwatch again? Nightwatch on Red Church's last one? Was he? I think so. Yeah, that's I right. So, yeah, and he was able, and Nightwatch was able to do pretty good uh, early down. So I'm hoping to see another representative from earlier if he does decide to choose that hunter again. Yeah. The Gravekeeper is a really, really good pick against Nightwatcher as he's not affected by the wind when he's underground. And there's a, a lawyer pick, a doctor, and a perfumer to go with it. Pretty decent picks, I would say. I don't know why, but like Doctor has been kind of, um, Doctor has been kind of scaring me lately because of how often she can rescue. If you don't get her down, even if you do get her down, she's got that self pickup. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> actually a menace. And able to heal and have that veteran's boost. And if you lose her, I mean, I mean, she's already healing, and it's hard. You have to start chase all over again. Right. All right. The first game. For, or the last game for SC is on the way. And it looks like he's going to find probably Perfumer first if he goes this way, but he's turning left actually. You know, with Lawyer's map, you can actually tell where he's going at all times. So you can just inform your team of where he's probably going to go. Uh, it looks like he is going to find Perfumer first, but actually, no, he's turning on to Doctor. A pretty good first chase target. Um, I don't know if he's going to get to them on time though. Before she gets to a good spot, that is. 
I'm getting to uh, mid broken area over here again. Like a repeat, gonna see this pilot over here. Oh, swings and misses, oh. and he is gonna get a first early hit at first early hit on this doctor. Um, and the ciphers are doing pretty well over here, but doctor does have that veteran speed boost. Gonna kite over here at top broken. Gonna take her uh, the route away from everyone using these walls. Good from. Uh, Lily using these walls as their advantage just to block all the wind and as Nightwatch has a fast hit animation getting that swing off right before Lily was able to get to that pallet so mm -hmm. another like we represented from uh, earlier another early down pretty yeah. quick early down yeah it, it did feel like a kind of a repeat of last match wasn't it because like mm -hmm. I, I feel like that exact same spot was used but it was uh yeah, think... it was someone else instead being chased I don't remember who <laughs> And he does have wanted order on the perfumer, and he does know where the other two are. He does see, he probably noticed that um, the cipher did stop decoding, so he is going to scout the area over here. He does know where two people are. He does scout the grave. Perfumer is over there, and he is going to get a hit. They're not going to get this rescue before half, though. So, and Nightwatch can stuff. Um, he has blink available, so we're going to see if uh, the grave people can get this rescue over here. Missing the hit, but he has blink. Oh, nice body block from um, from the Gravekeeper over here. Game Doctor's a kite just a little bit longer over here in mid-broken. Mm -hmm. It does buy her a little bit extra time, but she's got to use these rolls really effectively if she wants to get around the corner. And uh, it looks like she's going to go down, but she is pretty far from all these other ciphers. The survivors are still, in a way, uh, in a pretty good position to get a tie here, even if uh, Doctor goes down here. Yeah, the last um, three ciphers are almost primed. The other one is 99, and they are on going to start the last two ciphers um, pretty much quickly. So yes, it was an early down, but you know, cipher rush was just insane. From um, I forgot that they were saved after half, so Doctor will be leaving chair. So now it's just a 1v3 over here with two ciphers left, and Gravekeeper is injured. Yeah. Yeah, the next chase is probably going to be a perfumer, but they're running into each other right now. So that's not really great on their part. If they do happen to get caught in the same area, it's pretty much chasing two survivors at the same time. And uh, it looks like Gravekeeper will be going down. I don't think he's got any shovels left. I didn't see where he used his other shovel, but it looks like there's no item in his inventory. Perfumer. Uh, it was around when he after rescued. Ah, he I thought see. that he was gonna get chased again after last effort. Mm -hmm. It looks like he knows the perfumer is sticking around this area. Perfumer is pretty decent at doing rescues as long as she doesn't get terror shock right away. Oh, she does get the rescue off, but unfortunately, there's nowhere for him to go here, and without a kiting tool, it's very very difficult for, for her to get out. But they are on the last cipher. Like I said, they're able to get a draw at this point. And it is a lawyer, so that decoding speed is gonna come in naturally. Perfumer just has to body block this lawyer. I'm sorry, this grave. Oh, and farms the gravekeeper off chair. He won't be able to rebound. And if honestly, if she just took that body block, the cipher may have been primed. You see how fast lawyer decoding is pretty, pretty fast. It was just like at 20, and now it's already at 70. So if she's got that body block, maybe there could have been a potential pop, possibly maybe going for a tide. But Blink is up. He does have a lot of wind charges, and he is going towards that last cypher over here he also has trump card yeah it's best just to pop the cypher right now and maybe try to get one out if you can uh but he does have detention Ooh, a nice vault just barely but with uh with with night watcher being able to vault over pallets himself he can get quite a bit of distance to catch up with you on um it looks like lawyer will be going down but it seems like perfumer will be able to get out Actually, is the door open or is she just yeah, kind of... She, she opened the door. I'm surprised he didn't optimize to switch to teleport. He probably... Uh, Rue did have a chance to get a... Oh, he switched to excitement. Oh, wait, no. He just switched to excitement because... Uh, the game is for each other, yeah. I think he yeah. saw that the performer was out. Yeah. But, <laughs> but he could have, honestly... The gate was like at 50, 60, 70. So there was a chance to wave via straight up teleport. I mean, you do risk leaving the lawyer, but I mean, if it's just a 50-50 if that gate is not open to possibly maybe get a four-man uh, four elimination. Yeah, but, I, I think by the time like they put the lawyer on the door, the perfumer was like, pretty much out the door. But I, I, yeah. I can see what you're talking about there. I was surprised they didn't trump card a little bit earlier because that, uh, that cypher was pretty much done. Or like, um, the, he had a lot of... The, the Night Watcher had trump card and his blink up 
before he started dashing all the way to the cipher. I guess he just didn't think that the cipher would be done in time. <clears throat> but with lawyers decoding speed, like like I said, if Superman <laughs> just body block, I mean maybe that's lawyers decoding speed with a pot the cipher. Right. But um pretty pretty fast decoding from lawyer. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Needs to get nerfed. <laughs> True. And with that, that is the end of that set. So one three uh in favor of SC. So uh with that we'll uh take a short break and then we will get started on the next set. We're just going to be team Dream Bubbles versus Team Identity VTubers. Let me update that in the title really quickly and then uh we will get started as soon as we're ready. See you guys in a bit. Hello, hello. We are back with the last round. We are starting about 13 minutes early, but I think that's okay. It seems like everyone's ready to go for the last match of the day. It's going to be Identity VTubers versus Dream Bubbles. As always, we have Lupin in the Hunter seat, and um, it's going to be a Red Church map with a Priestess Band. So once we're ready, we will get the ball rolling. <clears throat> All right, it looks like we are ready. So I'm going to get Ooh, this. Did you spot I did. I did. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh my heart dropped for a moment. I was like, <laughs> oh, no, I hit the start button already. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. Mm <clears throat> okay. And um, these two teams, uh, you know, I, I'm kind of curious to see how this is going to play out. Um, at, at this point, the the first team one teams two or uh, i should say team afk and team fc their positions are firmly locked in as they have no more matches left throughout the week but this is kind of determining third and fourth place um i wish i could give out some consolation prizes but unfortunately i cannot but i might be able to submit this match to ngp discord and maybe get some smaller auxiliary prizes i don't know i'm gonna beg i'm gonna beg and throw a fit like a karen <laughs> <laughs> Like I can't. I'm gonna do my best for this community, okay? I I'm gonna fight the moderators. <laughs> All right, we're gonna switch into the game scene now. It is a night watcher on Red Church, um, and the the survivors are barmaid, composer, journalist, and perfumer. <clears throat> Pretty decent comp. They have a good rescuer. They have a healer, they have a great kiter, and they have a decoder. But it is against a night watch. Right. So it's all about distance. And I mean, Red Church is kind of, does hurt him a little bit. Just because you can turn so many walls, so many corners. But I mean, it's just how the survivors play and just the communication and just movement around the whole Red Church. Right. It's uh, it's anyone's game at this point. Like the, the distance that you can get from just... Uh, the, the stronger areas, like the inside church, aren't as strong against uh, Night Watcher because of the, the sucking ability. It's very, very wide. And it looks like he does know how to use the um, his abilities right off the bat to get a stack of that um, speed boost. <laughs> yes, we see do uh, rotations coming off from um, all, the, all the survivors, actually. Uh, we do see that the composer did rotate off. Huh? Barmaid is trying to get that point of vision. Hmm. And Nightwatch is... I don't think they want composer to ch chase. I get chased, so that's why we see the Barmaid trying to bait. But uh, Lupin ain't going to fall for that. And he does see his first target, which is a really good target What he wants is the composer. So decoding is going to be a little bit slow. Huh? Mm-hmm. You have to not to break that pallet, which is like, you know, he's going to get a lot of distance from that pallet anyways. So you might as well break it sometimes, uh, but he does opt to jump over it. He he doesn't have enough uh, stacks to do any more jumps, but he's about to get one now. And the composer is going through the middle of church. There's not a lot of places you can go to block a hit here. So it looks like he's going to take at least one. And they use that broken windows and is apologizing <laughs> for getting hit so early. But she, uh, Composer, is going to be able to kite enough on these good areas just to block off the point of vision from this Night Watch. Going to try to die away from everyone's cipher and going to try to make the window if he can. No, but again, uh, another early, uh, decent, decent kite, but a good down from a Night Watch in Red Church. Yeah, there's, there's one cipher already done and uh, actually there's two cyphers already done, so... The Cypher Rush is happening. It didn't seem like the chase lasted that long, but 
It indeed was quite a good uh, a good kite and a good chase. <clears throat> this is like the the average how a match usually goes. Oh, he just barely misses the journalist right there. Yeah, missing the point of view. She is hiding. Just gonna give to Nidus and he caught Lupin does kind of maybe see where journalist maybe is, but just doesn't want to just to stay near the chair and doesn't want to give a free rescue. Are we gonna see a little a little one they're gonna come up for save with the journalist? No, gonna go with the race. Regular save and farming the composer off chair. So this is really good for Lupin over here. Gonna try to get as much uh gonna try to get just lock down this survivor and just to make sure could secure that kill over here. But so you see Barmy just trying to be aggressive in decoding and composer just gonna die away from everyone's cipher. So really good uh movements from um, the survivor team over here. Yeah, and uh, the, he was able to pull, push off Barmaid from that cipher just a little bit, slowing down the coding. At this point, like any amount of slowing down kind of matters. And uh, actually, unfortunately, both of the ciphers look like they're almost going to be primed. So, but it doesn't look like there's a rescuer anywhere near the vicinity. They might be selling the composer here. You, it, 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 yeah, they might be, but because the one cipher is not even almost above 50, um, it is a little bit late. Let's see, there it is 34% of this last cipher machine. And Lupin can possibly maybe eliminate this composer if maybe stuff are rescue because they is cutting close. Perfumer is cutting it really close to get that last. Oh, but a sneak snake from journals over here. So, last cipher is 60%. Composer does have his ability, broken windows to kite, and the whole team is just going to be body blocking for this composer just to keep him to stay alive. Um, just for this last cipher to pop. Oh, there's the blink that's utilized. She was kind of in a corner already, but you know, anything, if, if you're really panicking, you need that down right away. Sometimes the blink does give you a little bit, like that split second that you save can matter. But the, in this situation, that cipher is not yet primed. <clears throat> and Perfumer is uh, gonna go for that rescue over here. Uh, but Lupin gonna probably pressure the cipher. Does find the blood trail, so Perf that see Perfumer is gonna be gonna go for that save. Remember, uh, Composer is dead in chair. Uh, Journalist did have her first time in chair. Last effort does pump in and they do pop the cypher. So we are into end game over here. Lupin gonna use his one dash to try to, try to catch the journalist. She is gonna use this little monitor just to try to body block over here. It's the pallet. No. Oh, but he oh, throws no. down the pallet and he hits it. I don't think the hit actually went off because there's no hit oh, recoil. Yeah. But yeah. this is not looking good for the journalist. She's She's in a spot where you don't have a lot to work with, but she does have another cutting angle, which does <laughs> the, does body block for her. It gives her a lot of movement speed. It's enough to get her a little bit of distance, but I don't know if she can get to the next area in time. There is a three-person escape in this uh, in this case. He's going towards the door, but all three of them are already out. He needs to get towards the journalist as soon as he can, and it looks like he found her again. There's no hatch in this area. It's, it's looking like a, at least a 1k here. Dungeon is unfortunately at top broken, but uh, Lupin is going to try to secure this one. Oh, but here comes another follower coming in. He does get body blocked by the dash. Gonna, it's all about mind games over here. If he gets palace done, she may, but she does make a run for it. No, she's going back to the pallet. Oh, he hits it again, and she does get the movement speed over here. So Lazy is just trying to try to cause as much time. Just try to get to that gate. Gonna try to mind, possibly mind game Lupin over here. Gonna get closer and closer to the gate as best as this journalist can. Yeah, and Detention is out in 30 seconds, but she's already has a point of damage on her. She's got no more resources to work with. It's it's all mind games, yeah. But he does have teleport, so in case he she does make a run for it, it's all... Oh, what no. He go, goes around. Oh, she could have made it, but decides to go back to the pallet. It, it is really difficult to judge because the oh. night one... Oh, the suck! Does oh, the suck happen? Oh, the second, there's a suck him in, and it's a four-man escape from the survivors team. He was close during the the last one, but having to change targets at the very end there is a very fatal decision for most hunters. If they're on last chair, it's usually better just to go straight for that one who's already about to go down, unless you completely lose them. But I think at that point, um, they they went quite a distance away, so. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> As soon as he saw all the survivors coming in, he probably knew. That's why he blinked on the journalist. Yeah, she was a little bit far, but she blinked just to make uh, Nightwatch blink just to make sure because he saw everyone body blocking. One the last cipher probably didn't know was probably pressured to you know probably just chair this one survivor because they did not know how much um, cipher was on the last on the last one. So understandable. You when you're in that tough and 
tough situations, especially when it's intense like that, you gotta you just gotta improvise and do the best you can to get another fast down. Mm -hmm. I'm really glad that they made that change where like hunters can kind of see the the progress of a cipher. Um, it used to be you couldn't see it at all unless you you kind of like determine it based on the shaking. But when you're a certain distance away from the cipher, it's really hard to tell. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> All right, let me that's, get Hunter in here. Sorry, go ahead. No, that's actually really good because honestly, it really helps the Hunter just, you know, hey, like the Cypher's like almost done. Should I have normal or not? But, you know, we do see that, you know, updates and changes are trying to help Hunters in this meta because at the time it was a survivor meta. But when Sangria mm -hmm. come out, now it's shifting to like a Hunter meta. But now it's like Sangrias are still losing, still winning. So honestly, it's I believe it's kind of a little bit balanced. Just a little bit. Maybe on the survivor side, but I think so too. Yeah. It it is I would say, yeah, because the if you just take out Sangria out of the equation, which most of I think she's like on permaband and um like in, in just regular rank. So it's just kind of like the old meta if you just subtract one character. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Plus uh I don't see aeroplane is played a lot, but cheerleader I feel like is widely used. So it, it did. Yes. I feel like she was. It, it seems like the survivors are getting stronger and stronger. With like it was. What were the last three? Like antiquarian, who's who was kind of crazy. Cheerleader, yeah. who became kind of crazy, and then aeroplane is which like I'm not really sure where to put him right now. I just don't see him very often. He is, and it's crazy how it's all in the distance basically kiting area so they have antiquarium harass can kite long enough if she's chase and with flywheel kind of hard to you know bring her down and then with cheerleader it's just like a composer but the composer has good decoding and he can kite just i mean you need anything just to kite and the distance what he has from from that tuning fork is just completely really amazing because you know one second counts and a distant counts at all but you know when cheerleader comes out just being able to dash twice and just get that much distance off from a hunter is just too overpowered. <laughs> Even mm -hmm. when she got nerfed, she's still good. She can dash any amount of times as long as it's on cooldown. Like, if it, the Enchantress stuns don't work on it either because she'll just go back into her thing. Hold on. there. I am being informed that there is a sub coming in for the hunting team. So Ireland will not be hunting... Uh, let me take a look at who it is. It must be... Let, let me check the tournament matchings information bracket. Oh, looks like it's Lazy Person. It was one of their dual faction members. All right. Let me get map selection. And one survivor, man, please. It looks like Lazy Person is going to be the hunter. We've never seen them hunt before, so I'm kind of curious as to how it's going to turn out. Ooh, and it's dual faction, so I. Oh, that's pretty cool. You allow the dual faction. Yeah. The is that normally a rule in Koa that they don't allow? Uh, no. <laughs> Why? Um, there's no dual faction. I. Want to say, let's just say... If you're good at both, I, just I, let him play both, you know? <laughs> all right. I feel like, you know, more people, more teams, I guess, or, like, the roster. You have five survivors, two hunters. Uh, you can only play one. I mean, I mean, I think the there will be so many good teams if, you know, you can play both, you know? Because a hunter would be a good-ass hunter and a survivor, so... I mean, but I don't... That's not allowed. Oh. Well... Um, this is more but of a I casual mean, tournament, so it's okay here. I mean, I think it's really... I, I, I really think that that is still unique. Like, that should, you know, kind of be considered, you know? I want to see a hunter play survivor. Or I want to see a survivor who's really good play hunter. <laughs> yeah, it's, in my opinion, like... I I don't think, like... You're not restricting them because they're too good or too bad or anything, you know? It's mm -hmm. just kind of like... Uh, I feel like if they're good, they're... If they can do both, let them... <laughs> you don't need yeah. as many people to follow teams if anything you'll get more teams from like uh because you'll get th there's more people who need teams right mm -hmm. anyway it's, it's not up to me but these are our rules so dual faction is allowed thumbs up it's the puppy bull rules <laughs> true <laughs> i'm allowing it in the veterans tournament as well um i mean it is cool rules but plus dual faction we'll just we'll just tag that little bit on 
I, I don't understand why that's a rule. It's a dumb rule. <laughs> I've honestly just feel like, you know, especially like if you're like considering as, you know, the top in the China teams, it's a job. Mm. Um, you would have too much, you know? I had to worry about Survivor, put enough in, in Survivor and Hunter. I just feel like it would just be too much. Well, that's only it, it's optional, you know. You don't have to do a faction. Oh, you just oh yeah, but I mean, I would want to do it. <laughs> right. <laughs> That'd be pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, it looks like we have a naiad hunting against a gravekeeper, a lawyer, an entomologist, and a gardener in arms factory. Uh, mercenary was banned. <clears throat> Let's go. <clears throat> I'm kind of curious. Oh, puppy bowl. Puppy bowl. <laughs> that's what uh, some of the teams are calling it. And you know, it is very accurate. <clears throat> and right off the bat, it looks like Nyad is right next to one of the survivors. It is the gardener who has, uh, she's got that shield that to work with. It's popped already, but it does buy her a little bit of time to get some distance off the Nyad. Uh, as a Nyad, when you throw out your Harpoon, you get a ton of movement speed, so it won't be too difficult for her to catch up to. And it does give her enough time to transition to whichever area she wants to go to next. Oh, gotta be a little bit careful here with the Terror Shock! Oh, it's not a Terror Shock, but she does get the hit through the window. That was a really risky play there. Alright, Gardner risking a whole lot right there just to get that. <laughs> that Oh, but she does have Tide, so she does not bring both the windows. But Gardner is gonna use that bubble just for, just to, you know, transition enough and to possibly maybe last out blink because blink is not um not up yet but this gardener does have tiger tie turner and doing the best that she can to last against this naiad which is really strong on arms factory mm -hmm. yeah. and are we gonna see a basement oh i didn't say nothing this time okay it wasn't me <laughs> <laughs> but you said one time and i wasn't gonna be getting basement <laughs> But actually, there is a Gravekeeper on this team, so Gravekeeper might be able to get this rescue off without having to deal with the, the crazy Nyad stuff. As you can see, the Gravekeeper's already on his way, and we'll, we'll see if he uses the, the special dig ability. Is he going to do it? Uh, It's like a button. Oh, and he drops down. He's going to get that free rescue off. I don't think the Nyad knows that you can actually dig under the, the, the basement and then rescue it that way. We are gonna see the bubble coming in from the gardener. She is uh, Naya. Good, good, um, good discipline on going down and getting that uh, hit on at least one of them and getting the last effort off a of tie. That was pretty, um, really good. Just to not do the hit animation recovery and able to swing again. But gardener is down. She is gonna die on the middle cipher. But good map control presence. We see that Naya is able to block off. Uh, two middle ciphers and entomologist is going to be able to pop so good job from um, lazy person over here blocking off possibly maybe two ciphers mm -hmm. you you gotta always be keep in mind that uh that spear is out there because when it pulls back and she closes off that section it's going to give you 60 wetness at full presence oh it's very difficult for her to get the rescue that rescue was stuffed by the the naiad it's because the the gravekeeper is wet like when you close off those puddles it's still considered um a lot of water Oh, and yes, and we did see a, a stuff rescue from this Nyad. Also, Lawyer getting hit too, but Gardner might be able to pop. She needs to kite enough for enough to get away. And last effort does come in just with those with that harpoon, like you just said. And honestly, I was looking for an accessory with this Nyad. You're talking about the lily pads? No, no, this is a different one. This is her <laughs> oh, is. like old A tier skin or A tier accessory. Oh. Yeah, the, this is not the accessory, but it's. It, it, it does make the water green, so cool. it's a poo poo water. <laughs> poo poo water. <laughs> the bees coming in for harass. Gonna try to have enough time with this gardener struggle free. Oh, I bet you she was just probably at the last minute of struggling free. Mm -hmm. It looks like the survivors are gonna get caught out healing here, and they're not in a good spot. It looks like all of them are hurt. They did not manage to get the heal off in time. And I did find the lawyer, and oh, is able to dodge one hit. Uh, there the, isn't a lot of space for him to kite here, though. Unfortunately, these will be going down pretty soon. The This position is not really great for most survivors. Usually, you want to be in, like, the ruins area, like, the inside of ruins area. But, yeah, as you know, with Nyad, she is able to flood out large sections of the map. So, you can't really use the same area for too long. 
Yes, and it was very unfortunate. They did try to heal, but Lazy Person kind of knew where they were trying to healing, or probably heard like the animation of healing, and they were instantly spot out for um, against this Naya. So good, um, um, Hunter Game Sense to spot out the healing survivors, putting more pressure on this team. And two ciphers left that we see. Honestly, they're almost, they're literally like close to almost being done. So possibly maybe seeing an after has save from this entomologist, but it is gonna be really hard to get off this save since it is a naiad full presence with blink on um post and is really good at stuffing saves right and uh, the entomologist did seem like she was coming in but i think they're opting to heal up yeah they're all hurt right now it's going to be very difficult to rescue i think the middle cipher and the one they're currently on looks like that's almost done but they get caught out again almost before they're able to finish off their heal so it looks like they're going to take down the Entomologist, and it's just going to be Gravekeeper up now. It's probably looking like a hatch play. Oh, but no, Gravekeeper's gonna try to pop this last Cypher, put in um, pressure, and gonna use that shovel. Oh, but gets hit out of shovel, and this is going to be a poor elimination coming from Lazy Person's Nyan. Yeah, I always thought it was going to be a little bit... I, I thought they changed Gravekeeper to the point where, like, as soon as you start the animation, it kind of blocked a hit. But it looks like you need to be, like, sort of in the ground first before it blocks yeah. those hits. It has to be a little bit more faster. Mm -hmm. I, I literally thought that, too. Like, if you automatically just press it, you just automatically go in. But it looks like there's just a little slight animation to where you can just hit him just about before he goes in. Mm-hmm. All right, and now on to the last two games of the day. <clears throat> and that game was actually pretty decently close because I, I think that middle cipher was being worked on the whole time. It was just that, uh, unfortunately, some of the kiting happened to be in that area. And when you're, when you're cutting off a cipher as a naiad and that entire area gets flooded out, it, it's... It's very difficult to get those ciphers done. I know some survivors that like if you don't flood it out enough, they take those risks and they they constantly like tap those tap the ciphers. But you always got to pay attention. Where is this puddle going to be, and how much water am I at? Because as you saw, there was a bonus hit on the entomologist there, which uh, made it difficult for them to do a second rescue. Uh, mm -hmm. So let me get up the invites really quick. Find those puddles. Mm -hmm. So much water. <laughs> yeah. And just the range from her. She literally, literally, she almost blocked off middle cipher, but she was just off by a little bit. So they continued to code that one cipher. But you mm -hmm. just see how the range of Nyad has just her, especially with mobility and map pressure, is just completely insane. Yeah, those two areas at the front of, uh, in the middle of Arms Factory, you don't really see two ciphers spawning together that close very often but when they do it's it's kind of advantageous on the hunter's part to just cut both of them off at the same time especially as a naiad who, who just needs to leave her water there people don't usually say like talk about the like reciphering themselves because i think dbd first started saying like oh they three gem themselves but it happens in idb as well it's just uh a little bit more difficult because you hunters can't regress the cipher without abnormal Okay, let me get these pairings out. But overall, it was a really close match. Last two ciphers are at least about 80. It was just then to, like you said, eating that additional hit. If she didn't have to take that hit, there could have been a, a, a save off and possibly maybe a, a tie. Yeah, that was really close. <clears throat> Can you guys hear like the the lobby music? I don't think you can hear it on stream, but it's the it's when the IDB like what are these the default soundtracks? <laughs> okay, it looks like we're going to sacred, and the band is actually on Night Watcher.
Hunter is Lupin. Mm hmm. He did play a uh, Nyad on the first day, so you might be see able to see the return of Lupin Nyad. Or it might be Lucino again. Can can Lucino hop into the second floor from outside the hospital? I want to say yes and no. I don't know. I haven't seen Lucinos do that. But I want to say yes, just because he's able to jump a little bit higher. But, I mean, you have to, like, coordinate it pretty, really well. Yeah, like, there, there's some spots where I'm like, can you just jump, like, through the bottom floor to the top floor if you're inside or outside? Because, like, like, I think you can do it on, on Big Boat from uh, Lakeside, but I just, mm -hmm. I don't see that many Lucinos. So it's it's very rare, especially on those maps. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, and it is kind of hard with the, you know, angle positioning and your point of view too as well. Because mm -hmm. you know the Toy Merchant can do it. And if Toy Merchant can do it, I'm sure Lucino Yeah, can do it. if Toy Merchant can do it, I'm, you're definitely right. Lucino can possibly do it. Well, definitely <laughs> should do it. <laughs> okay. Area selection is on perfect. Next match <laughs> is underway. We'll just go to this scene first. He's using that reindeer skin. His face is so oddly realistic. <laughs> I know, right? It's so weirdly detailed <laughs> compared to the rest of him. They really put an effort into that skin. <laughs> I guess. It's beastier too. Mm -hmm. We are going to see a composer, barmaid, toy merchant, and mercenary. So overall... There's support, there's healing, there's decoder, kiting, and a rescuer. So good team comp from um, from the team over here. And Lucino is going to spawn Shaq. So Composer needs to create as much distance as he can because I'm pretty sure he is the target to be chased. Yes, sir. And it seems you got to be careful because uh, I know the horrors of that one certain lineup with the toy merchant that tosses <laughs> you in the birdcage. And Lucino can't land in that small window unless you're like... You're really, really good at Luchito, so <laughs> I'm I'm really worried for him if that catapult gets lined up. And yeah, you're right. It does look like he's going after Composer first. I don't know if he saw him actually. He was he was clear on my screen, but he clearly left this area already. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Good rotation off from the Composer, knowing that he, since you know he was gonna get chased, mm. so he just automatically just said, "Okay, I'm not gonna deal with this." Let me go to a good kiting area that is against Lucino, which is going to two-story. But uh, Lupin gonna have Lupin is having a difficult time with these rotations from this uh, composer over here, and just gonna continue to spot out uh, with this tonight. It's gonna try to find the next survivor, which is possibly gonna be in the hospital, which is going to be a little bit difficult, knowing you can't jump that much. But it looks like Barmaid's is about to walk in. in front of well, him. he's like, not he's looking to the left. He didn't look on the side of him, and Barmaid's just gonna get a free. A free uh, walkthrough over here, and Lupin's just gonna change targets, gonna try to find the next person over here, which is going to be at Shaq. Yeah, this is really unfortunate timing. It, it, she walked literally right next to him, and I think she she realized that at some point and then turned around and then kind of followed up behind him once he realized that Lucino was not looking behind him either. But it, it's good that he refound the composer. That was his, uh, the first chase that he was looking for this whole time. Oh, he does use the blink here. Let's see if he gets the hit off. Oh, does not land. Oh, actually, it does land. Yeah. I, I did not expect that, but... <laughs> nice hit. Nice hit, though. Yeah. Composer going to be kiting around in the Rudin's area, and Lucino's going to get the... No, he oh. charge attacks on accident. Maybe if he just does normal attack, he probably would have got that, but Composer is going to take advantage, going to loop this nice window over here in Ruins so you can kite as, um, against Lucino, and Lucino's going to use that jump. Mind giving the Composer and gets the Terra Shock off the Composer, giving him first presence and almost close to max, so... He does have his ability to stomp, so getting this rescue against this Lucino is going to be a little bit difficult for whoever comes in. Yeah, this is one of those areas where it's like strong against most hunters, but against Lucino, you're kind of like 50 50 whether he's going to jump into the right spot or not. <laughs> it's always kind of a, a coin toss with, a, with how the jumps are going to land. <laughs> These last two survivors are going to go on to the last two uh, ciphers over here. We do have two ciphers left. We are going to see a save coming in from the mercenary, hopefully, but it is, it's getting close. Is he going to get this before half or not? 
Oh, no, and it's going to be an after half save. Mercenary is going to get a double down over here. And it looks like he's going to do his best to try to body block this composer. No, just leaving the composer just to kite in a nice, decent area against Uchino over here. Um, yeah, it is a double down. Good job from Lupin. And it is an after half save. So composer is going to have to kite for the rest of his life. Blink is not up or available at the time. So I'm pretty sure composer is going to keep on kiting in this nice area where he's going to want to be, which is in the site uh, hospital. Yeah, and it looks like the, I, I don't think there's a lot of progress on Toy Merchant Cipher, which is going to be the last cipher. It's, it's only about 40% done. Uh, there's plenty of time for Lupin to, to try and catch this composer and then maybe try to get onto that last cipher to see if he can make it in time. Lupin doing the best. Yeah, Lupin doing the best he can. Is going to try to kite on the last cipher. Oh, but gets stomped from Lucino since he does have that. He does have that max presence. He Lucino does see um mercenary uh where he fell down so he does have a, a peripheral vision of where everyone's at on the map and we are gonna see the last chair of composer gonna get set off into a rock chair back into the manor accidentally ran into the tree but we do see the barmaid play again coming um again with her healing so uh, mercenary did take that over um healing and is gonna cut Kites again to the last oh. cipher. So a little bit of miscommunication from these survivors over here. And Lupin is going to try to get enough distance. Getting a nice stomp off the mercenary. So mercenary is going to go down again. Yeah, that he walked right past. I don't think he saw the toy merchant working on that last cipher. And the cipher is popped right on time. Uh, with that detention hit, he still might be able to down that mercenary. But he goes a little bit too far. You can't really control your camera when you're jumping like that on PC. Uh, oh. The lineup is good. Oh, That's I, like, so amazing. <laughs> when I saw the catapult there, I was like, oh no, does anyone else see it? <laughs> you gotta take care of those catapults because it can really end a chase like right there if you don't take care of them right away. A really great placement from this toy merchant over here. She does know her spots, so and he did use teleport, so these survivors do know where um that the ability is gone. Toy merchant does have her little um, flying to just probably maybe drop down, but no, Lupin's gonna hit her, get her with that detention, and survivors are on the last gate. It is 43%, so it looks like they will be able to get a tie uh, from 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 this match over here. And Lupin doing a really good job. Um, he did get rotated early, but he was able to stuff the save off of um, Composer. And are the survivors gonna be leaving? Yeah, they're just yes. gonna secure this tie <laughs> since it is a detention, Lucino. <laughs> right. And that catapult's back up there still, actually. I know, right? <laughs> and I, I've been saying this for, like, uh, I, I, I mean, no disrespect this way, but, like, you actually don't really need to know how to kite if you know a few certain tricks. Like, uh, if you're playing Toy Merchant, those lineups can straight up end a chase, no matter what the hunter is. And, uh, be, like, if you get those lineups, the certain ones that go into, like, maybe even Leo's memory that can take you up those stairs, or the one that gets you through that that birdcage window like you just saw not a lot of hunters can get through that and it buys you so much time and distance you can just run straight to the catapult you don't have to kite nothing and you just get away scot-free so <laughs> yeah and then when you're the hunter you're just like well i can't do that <laughs> yeah exactly i'm not gonna fit on this catapult <laughs> But it's really great. Honestly, it's really good seeing like all these different characters that we don't like I you, that me personally don't see and how these teams are using journalists, uh composer, uh toy merchant, uh, barmaid too as well and just using them to, you know, be able to work together, uh especially how you said um in the beginners like they're just using their survivors so well adaptively with coordinated with the team and coming back to deficits too from being losses to ties and ties to wins right <clears throat> let me turn on the area selection i'm always going to say it out loud so that <laughs> i know i did it <laughs> let the record show <clears throat> but yeah the, some of those dark horse survivors that uh they aren't i, I don't know did you see toy merchant a lot when you were playing or is she kind of um, she kind of basically almost kind of find, fell off of the meta just mm. because, you know, Geisha. Oh, I right. Had, uh, uh, opera Singer comes out now. You you jump, well, Opera's going to be right behind you. True. Um, she don't really care 
exactly uh, <laughs> even with even with priestess war portal you down someone opera zinger is gonna literally there she's gonna be there literally um in i in ivl china an opera singer teleported the first stop they opened the gate at fourth stop she was able to get there before the gate opened that's insane that is insane <laughs> so that is just hunters now mobility are just completely crazy yes we are going to get those speciality characters from survivors like toy merchant like journalists maybe even novelists especially with the rework mm. uh, he is going to be allowed to be played but i mean with all these hunters and if you're going with a hunter who knows what he's doing especially like dream Watch, clerk anything like i mean maybe not clerk but you know those difficult fast mobility hunters it's going to be really hard to try to implement uh toy merchant into there mm-hmm yeah, I, I can see that happening. Because, like, I, I do understand that, like, you know, sometimes when the Toy Merchant catapults, if it's not a lineup, and sometimes you can't always get those lineups, then you're just kind of, like, the same speed as the Hunter, and he's going to follow behind you. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. it doesn't buy you as much distance as you think. It, it's only those, like, really specific situations where, like, oh, well, that sucks <laughs> kind of moments. And then, yeah, and then when I placed my catapult and I said, yeah, you can take it in the Leo's memory, and they take it and they fall down. Yeah, you, you gotta be really good with those lineups too. <laughs> but wait, didn't they update didn't they buff her so you can maybe align it now? Can you? I I'm don't not know. I'm too sure. I'm about to look at that. Mm. I'm pretty sure she got a buff. I'm not too sure. Maybe. I may be lying. <laughs> <clears throat> There's also the fact that uh Toy Merger can't use items as well, which is kind of, she keeps them in the chest. Uh I know, but right? <laughs> you get it you do get a free one to support your allies that makes her a pretty decent support. You don't have to search through a chest right away. Um, okay, Priestess and Seer ban. The map selection is Lakeside with a Bloody Queen ban. That's really interesting. This is the first time Lakeside has been picked. Usually people hate Lakeside. <laughs> yeah, and leaving out a possibly maybe Toy Merchant. So maybe we may see those great lineups with Toy Merchant again. Yeah. If they decide to choose that character. I'm sorry, I already forgot what the bans were. Priestess and Seer. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> <clears throat> oh we gotta get uh ireland to switch off oh there we go yeah I, I saw they were still on bloody queen for a moment but it looks like they got the message so we are good to go <clears throat> this is the first lakeside map of the tournament in the last match so i'm kind of oh, curious the last match? this is the last match yeah the oh, last one wow. we're finishing a lot of head of schedule that's great i know Ooh, lo um, prisoner, lawyer. Uh, you notice how all these teams are really going for fast decoding. There's not that really that much debuff with just one rescuer and three fast decoders. Yeah, like a, a prisoner. This is the first prisoner we. We know. I think we saw one yesterday. But I would have thought he was be a little bit more of a popular pick. Yeah, we did see mine die today too. Yeah, you see all the a lot of non-meta picks, which is kind of interesting. Yeah. And that's why I ban prisoner. <laughs> <laughs> really, you ban prisoner? Yeah, he's just so like if you don't find him, and especially with map selection, like a big boat. If if Galadriel's gonna have a hard time, he knows Galadriel knows where prisoner is. Mm -hmm. But if prisoner is able to hide and you waste that much time, especially with the lawyer, you can immediately cipher rush. Mm -hmm. and hide and if you're if she moves you just decode right but uh got the over here is in this frank um gonna use the science to figure out this prisoner she does see the blood trail so prisoner is gonna have to kite he did bring uh broken windows so he's gonna kind of be able to kite long enough the stun is gonna be implied but you know it is big boat so um it's gonna be a little bit difficult when it comes to all these statues over here, is he gonna use the stun to jump a window? Oh, oh no! Shot. <laughs> Next oh, to the basement. That was very close. I I saw it too. I was like, no way! They're they're gonna vault the window, and then that that sculptor pick. It went like uh, that sculptor pick was Real. like really through the window. I did not expect it to hit, but it did hit him right in the butt. And uh, -huh. uh this is the basement jinx. All the basement games are happening in the last four games. Yeah. He got it said he didn't want to see any basement. <laughs> well, here they are. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Oh my goodness. But uh, good job from Ireland. Going to get this uh, Terror Shock off this um, prisoner. And it is going to be hard. She yeah, Fento has to be careful with this drop down animation. Oh, good job for Ento pushing the sculptor with her just so <laughs> she. Nice, honestly, she's just body blocking the sculptor. Going to get a free, a nice, decent rescue. There is no tide. Prisoner did bring her out of the hit, uh, hit animation. And Ento's gonna use the bees just to block. Oh, it but hits the Ento through the body block, but gives Prisoner enough chance to uh, potentially rebound Kai. Mm hmm. And that, that entomologist actually really risky play there. I would not rescue from the basement if I don't have Tide or a way to get my friend out of there. But luckily enough, she did change. They they essentially swap survivor positions. But it does buy them that first 30 seconds of time. Prisoner cannot take another chair at this point. But you know, if they end up uh, selling this survivor right here. Oh, actually, they're not selling. The mercenary is here for the second, uh, for another rescue onto Entomologist. He does have Tide. Oh, it manages to go right past her, but she gets a drop hit onto the mercenary. Unfortunately, if they did get the rescue off, which is great, he's carrying the survivor. Oh no, they're, they're carrying her on her with the bees and it takes her almost out of the basement. Oh my goodness. But honestly, that was a good elbow pad rescue from Mercenary. Uh, just good job from Ireland being able to react to that uh, Mercenary elbow pad. They are, they do have the last two ciphers. Uh, like almost going to be almost done, but it is three ciphers left. So they do not need a whole new full cipher. Um, Galatia is just going to keep moving around. She does block the prisoner over here. This prisoner needs to get out of this area because uh, she's almost close to full present sculptor. So he is one chip down and just kiting this sculptures very well. Um, Ireland get, does know where the dungeon is, does know where, and it's two people down, one person dead in chair. So Ireland um, looking really good with this sculptor right now, which is putting so much map pressure and chasing all these survivors over here. Yeah, I'm surprised she didn't go back for the entomologist because she did have entomologist going down eventually. She opts to get the prisoner, who is a decoder, but it, and he is on the last chair, but it, she was lucky enough to find him in that beach area. Uh, in other situations, it could have been pretty bad if she wasn't able to find him. Mm -hmm. But we do see the collision from the statues is going to be connecting and knocking down the prisoner. And prisoner will be going back to the manor. They do have the last two ciphers. Everyone's half injured right now. Uh, lawyer using that map just to see what this Galatea is going to do next. And they're not they're not healing, but they're focusing more on um, decoding the last cipher. So they do want to get the cipher rush in as fast as they can. 121, 1 at 60. And... Uh, honest mercenary is just gonna decode right in front of her face. Last um, delayed effect from mercenary comes in, and look how fast the nerf did to mercenary. Look how fast he's gonna die. So almost oh, close wow. to basement, but he dies so quickly now with that nerf on him, and we are gonna see the mercenary is gonna get chaired. Yeah, that lawyer is working on the cipher, and it sounded like the cipher at the top of bow was almost primed. Uh, she does have her chisel to maybe push off the entomologist, but this chisel positioning is a little bit awkward if you don't have a... Uh, I'm not exactly sure where the statues are going to end up if that chisel goes there. But she's going to have to get entomologist off that cipher one way or another. Because um, it looks like both the ciphers are almost primed. I'm Oh! Yeah, it looks like entomologist is going to come in for the rescue as her cipher is finished. And it looks like the, the lawyer's cipher is primed. She does just trump over to teleport. She has all her statues to work with here. Entomologist just needs to get out of rescue somehow. And she gets it off. And there's the cypher pop. All the three survivors are up and running right now. She decides to go after the entomologist who's headed into beach. The hatch is here. So if they manage to get two uh, to, to kite long enough for two survivors to get out the door, entomologist could potentially go for that hatch. But she does go down to the full presence sculptor. Those statues are pretty difficult to avoid once they start combining together and smashing against the walls and changing directions. Yeah, and Orlando chooses to aggressively play really aggressive over here, teleporting on the gate. The gate was 70, almost almost done, but Lawyer gonna get knocked down and looks like Ireland does want to go for possibly maybe more points over here. Uh, downing the Lawyer and gonna skip get the Lily's chair over here um, that was really risky because if he teleports and no one's there then maybe someone could have got a free rescue and they just possibly maybe it's just gonna be a race towards end game but good um good aggression from Ireland over here chairing um the lawyer and being able to just put so much pressure on these survivors the gate is open over there on the mercenary side and it looks like 
they are just gonna just gonna go for the one man over here. Yeah, but the the end game tele call. right. The end game teleport is all about that mind game. Like, if they, the, you can guess that the sometimes the hunter thinks like you can guess that the survivor that popped that cipher was closest to that door. So you think that okay, the survivor survivor is most likely going to the closest door to them. But then sometimes the survivor thinks okay, well they know that we're gonna do that, so we're gonna go to the other door instead. <laughs> but actually, the mercenary comes around and does save the lawyer. That that door isn't open, but Galatea is pretty far away from this door. They might be able to open up the remaining section of it and then both be able to get out. I'm surprised the mercenary was able to book it across the map that quickly. Yes, and gate was almost open. There is seven seconds on detention, and the gate was just 99, and they are going to get this tied. I did not expect oh, the gate to be almost I done. I did not <laughs> expect it to be almost done. That's how close it was. I mean, this lawyer could have honestly just got out, but Galatia just had to put more pressure, and it looks like it just backfired <laughs> just a little bit. Mercenary was able to get that sneaky save, and look at that. Turn from a one-man to... Um, looked like a four man to a, a tie. Yeah, that was it, it got really close to the end. The mercenary was out scot free, but decided to be a hero and it paid off. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the sculptor <laughs> yeah. does have a lot of uh, ability to look around the map with her sculpt, but it's actually really difficult to land if you're on PC. Like when, when I play a uh, sculptor, it's the, the controls are so delicate that if you do it a little bit too far, you're not going to have any vision on anything. But you are able actually to still move while you're sculpting, so when she was headed towards that beach area, she could have still been walking towards that prisoner for a little bit um, when they were uh, at, at beach. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, it was very... Uh... Uh, Ireland's uh, sculptor was really great. You saw a lot of statues. It's just the way the the ciphers were, and when he, um, she chiseled onto the cipher, it was just very difficult. If he chiseled, um, if the chisel was just a little bit like you know closer, like around the big boat, to get the get a better point of view, maybe he probably would have stuffed the entomologist, or maybe just go for the the shack one. But um, you know, the survivors saw that and capitalized that, and so c congratulations to like you know the entomologist from getting able to rescue that i would not be able to rescue that honestly i give her <laughs> all my congrats because i would have got stuffed i'd be like well i'm eating these statues <laughs> yeah me too the, the, <laughs> there were so many statues he had all six yeah. to work with and i was like okay well I, good luck but it did work out like it was perfect mm -hmm. and if we're going to just go for the tie um mercenary being a little bit uh have to be the hero and say we're gonna go for this this gate was literally 99 and they got out just to get that tie. So another close match, mm. even with basement Hikaru. <laughs> uh, yeah, there were there were three basements for the end of the day, but and with this, the I think um this last game was determined third and fourth place. I believe Dream Bubbles does end up taking third place here. Uh, but our first place winners are Team AFK, uh, with Team Captain Bunicorn, and our second place is Team SZ. So that concludes our beginners bracket tournament for 2023 this is my my first time hosting beginner brackets there were a little bit of hiccups along the way but all in all i think everything turned out great so thank you so much for all the teams that participated uh sorry did you have something to say paul but i was just laughing because i was like puppy oh. bowl. <laughs> the, the puppy bowl <laughs> idv tournament <laughs> thank you all so much to the participants we will get your prizes paid out accordingly uh i will be contacting your team leads or getting you guys into a call uh later on uh probably right after this or later in the day we'll arrange a time um for second place i think we can arrange that uh the second place team i believe got a a tier pet so uh i've got do have to contact the ngp discord about that that's all they were willing to give out but um hopefully they're able to follow up on that with you guys and i will also message you about that later on um, next week we have our veterans division. There will be more prizes to give out as there are a lot more teams to deal with. Remember that it will be streamed consecutively on two different channels on Saturday, but only on this channel on Sunday for the, uh, semifinals, um, whatever's before semifinals and finals. So <laughs> I, there's definitely a word for that. Um, but thank you once again, all the participants, all the spectators, all the teams, uh, for coming along, and I hope you have a great rest of your weekend. <clears throat> uh, don't forget to check out my follow co-host. Um, it was Black Venus, 
Black Phoenix yesterday who helped shoutcast the games for me. And today it is before you Paul Blooms on his Switch channel. Do you want to shout yourself out one more time? Oh yeah, I mean if you want. Yeah. You, I guess. You can follow me on Twitch, y'all. My name is B for You Problems and I also have a YouTube, but I'm more on actively on Twitch. And thank you again for bringing me uh, Hakaru. This is really good for the community. You're doing a really great thing. And I can't wait for next weekend. I will be there and to see a veterans play. Yeah, I'm I'm really excited too. The the games are gonna be pretty intense because a lot of them are professional teams so yeah it'll be really great to not be against them this time and be able to cast over them <laughs> yeah all right thank you once again everyone i hope you have a great rest of your weekend and i will see you all next week Bye bye